My name's Corey. Welcome to Twitch Talk. How are we doing today? Uh, this is a Monday. We're here. Uh, hi. How's it going? Let's uh, go over to here. Boom. There we go. What up, guys? Hello. Howdy. Haru, even. Let's see if we can... Whoa, too big. There we go. We'll go down to here. Howdy. How's it going? Ah, uh, morning, 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 morning. Scott Richard Scasso, welcome to the Corey Adam Live Music Show playlist. Yeah, before the show starts, every episode, we play music. Ah, you got me. Ah, ha, ha. nice goggles. They're not goggles, they're fucking glasses. And they're by a company who I'm not going to say because they still haven't offered to fucking sponsor me yet. Mm. I don't know what I feel about that, but that's just the kind of way it is. Got to get that 15 minutes of plugs in. What 15 minutes? What do you, what? I don't understand. There's 15 minutes of plugs? What are you talking about? We don't even, like, we rarely do two minutes of plugs on this show. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But, 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 but Aaron says you say 10. You got to start at 10. I did start at 10. The stream goes live at 10. You were here 10. Boom, it was up and running. Yes, you have to wait for the preamble before it starts, but the stream went live at 10. Calm the fuck down. You dick through your sweatpants, motherfucking Staska. All right? Yeah. You know, we're also going to get a little vibe going. Let's, uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're impatient and you weren't preparing. I, I listened to, uh, Sister Mind. Seems like she knows what's going on. All right, how are we doing? We doing good? Let's start off, it's Friday. We're gonna start off with a little mood. Oh shit, or at least we were going to, until that didn't work. I always forget that I have to reset this shit on fucking Mondays. doesn't work a job while listening to this show yeah whatever oh yeah if you're working a job that means you're at your work captive so shut the fuck up all right chillax bro it's gonna be okay we love you we're here to support you it's all gonna be okay just lean back relax it's monday i know i know i'm just fucking with you man don't worry about it Come at me, man. Out of the gates on a Monday? Shit. What up, JJ's blood alcohol content? How are you? I'm working, but at my cousin's captive with a 10 week old pup named Jeff. Oh, yeah, that, that fucking puppy, man. What kind of dog is that? I bet CD posted about it, a little brown guy. I see. Mm. I'm sponsored by Corey. All right. When does the soft porn start? You already did, producer Mikey. You're late. You're late for the soft porn. We humping. We humping that soft porn, baby. That soft porn humping. I 
I just like to lean in to Fridays, you know? You get here, you just gotta let the show come to you sometimes. Oh shit! Oh shit! <coughs> ah. Rock face. Hell yeah. Jeffrey Rogers subscribing. That's super rad. Let's uh, let my little alert box thing go. Let's try to test that. There it goes. All right. Thanks for helping make this shamdemic bearable. Shamdemic? We're calling it shamdemic now? All right. I'm into that. Jeff, are you in right now? Are you in the Discord? check in see what you guys are talking about today yeah what are you what are you doing what are you doing at noon rochester yeah it was all right don't disclose my location on the air ever what's wrong with you well you're not there anymore i can't talk about it doesn't matter you don't tell you don't tell people where i've been i got some real (laughs) grade a weirdos on this channel man don't you fucking do that (laughs) yeah man how was your uh, disc golf it was awesome, man. I got a chance to go up and play both sides of uh, the Airborne Preserve in Clearwater, the uh, Lynx course, and the Timberwolf. It was a blast. I played uh, two. Now, where is, have you played Vision Quest? Where does that lay in? Because there's those two, right? Yeah, Vision Quest is uh, about five minutes further north up 65 than Blue Ribbon. And there's another one next to Blue Ribbon, right? Like, or there's three now, right? Uh, I'd be how, unaware far away, of how far away is the Airborne Preserve from Blue Ribbon? Oh, quite a ways. Airborne oh, okay. Preserve, okay. 15 minutes south of Blue Saint Ribbon Cloud. and Vision Quest are the ones that are like right next to each other, right? Yep, yep. One's just five Airborne, minutes up. Airborne is the one that's just a gutted out golf course. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's pretty negative uh description of what it is it's uh there's a lot of technical lines that they've created and they've done a lot of different landscaping things too. yeah but it takes it's on an actual golf course right 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 so yeah that they definitely... got it and made a disc golf course let's stop with your narratives of what's negative and not man i'm just stating the facts calm down <laughs> yeah it's, like, what, it's do, you, really do you own weird. stock in them or some shit no, I just okay. Uh, then calm no, the fuck down. Yeah. It's a gutted out golf course that they resculpted to be a absolute beautiful disc golf course. Oh, that was sweet of you to say. Well, I'm just saying, man. You don't gotta get your fucking panties in a bunch over there, man. Calm down. I know right, it's early yeah. in the morning, but you gotta calm the fuck down, bro. Calm down. I'm just waiting for this. I'm just waiting for this weed cookie to kick in. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds like it needs to kick in. Stat, you're fucking uppity. <laughs> Hamburglar says, I know the guy who owns Vision Quest. Now, okay, so I don't know a lot about Vision Quest, but, like, that's the one that was the copycat, right? Because, like, I know the story about, like, how... Is it Blue Pines? Blue Ribbon Pines, right? Blue Ribbon Pines, So Blue yep. Ribbon's Pines... Now, I might get this wrong, but Blue Ribbon's Pines was the first one, and then the other dude is friends with that guy, and he built the second one, and those two are, like, right next to each other. And it's kind of like a small-town rivalry, but they don't really care like the people around them care more about it than they do vision quest is a kind of like a a fantasy land type but they're setup. both they're both on private property right like they're both just like some dude's land that's like we're gonna clear trees and make a frisbee golf course yeah finger guns sure 
finger guns. Yeah, uh, but Vision Quest is cool if you want to like play disc golf, and they actually have golf carts you can use there. It's uh, wait, it's what? Neat. They have golf carts? Absolutely. I don't know. Are if they you can't frisbee walk. golf carts? Uh, they do have disc racks in the back of them instead of your traditional like strap on your bag to the thing. Okay, that's kind of rad. Yeah, yeah, and there's uh, speaker holders on them, so you can attach your Bluetooth speaker and just drive around <laughs> and rock out. Lane just said, it's been so long since I heard a cute little min MN accent. Oh, yeah, we have an accent? Fuck you, that must pal. Be me. That, that must be me. That makes me sad. I think I'm just going to drink this pop and think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, you betcha. Oh, for neat. Oh, for oh, neat. neat. For Pete's sakes. Oh, for need is definitely my most. When are you gonna Minnesota. come down here to uh, Damn Dare to Cities Den, huh? Actually, oh, when it's I funny. Come so, down... like up north in Hibbing, very thick accents, right? Like, if I go up to my grandparents' house for more than two or three days, I come back with it. Like, it's it's really it's fucking thick too. Oh yeah, sure. You got to go over there, Den. Come on down later for some hot dish. Yeah, see, now the difference between your hat dish and your casserole is basically just what you call it. You want your hat dish cold? No, then you don't want any fucking casserole. For fuck's <laughs> sakes. That casserole sounds a little Chicago, if you ask me. Oh, yeah, sure. A lot of your people think it's from Chicago. Get fucked. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Vision Quest is a really rad course. They got uh, some hanging baskets, and they have obstacles that you throw over that are other a, than I trees. I had an axe that had some hanging baskets. You're right, yeah. They, I mean, they have one at Blue Ribbon, but there's more than one at Vision Quest, and there's... It's like... I kind of think of it as like a mini golf course for disc golf. Just because it's <laughs> fantasy land. There's oh, just yeah? Weird mini yeah, golf? it's neat to go to. Oh, God. Yeah. I love that hole with the windmill. <laughs> No, but there's like a, I don't know if you haven't seen it. There's there's a hole that's like a, a, a hill, but you can drive the cart up the hill because it's swirled around to, it kind of like shaped like an ice cream cone that you can drive up. And on one side of the hill, there's a rope climb and it's probably a 45 degree angle that you can like scale the wall if you want to do it that way, or you can drive the cart up. It's just, it's different. It's cool. There's, All for cute. Yeah. There's a... Paddle boards. There's a lot of water holes, and they got paddle boards and rowboats and disc golf retrievers. So you can kind of scoot around the little man-made lake there and get your disc back. There's an you island. Do they have that, on the back of the carts yeah. or at the holes? Like what? Who's gonna ruin the game of disc golf? And actually, here's oh my god, Jeff, I just made us a million dollars. Are you ready? Yes. Disc washing machines. Disc, yeah, disc washing stations. That would be brilliant. Yeah, yeah, like you know those golf ball washers that they have. Absolutely. Yeah, that, but like made for a disc. We just made a million dollars, bro. Patent pending. All you sons of bitches in the Discord, this is That's our right. idea. Yep. This is this, this is idea. this is verbally binding on Twitch. We can prove it. And this is the best part. Even if they hit us, this is a live broadcast, bro. Like it's already out there. Even if they Boom. kill us, it's already ours. <laughs> Our families are set up for life. That's right. It's gonna be fucking sweet. It's a boot time. <laughs> a boot. Did you a watch? Uh, did you watch any of that UFC? Was it live last night? I, I, <laughs> uh, I was, Saturday. So I watched some fights last night that were rerunning on ESPN two. Uh, they were okay. Uh, I mean, it was like Derek Brunson is like all like you know I ain't that journeyman, which is cool. But beyond that, it was kind of boring. It wasn't their best who, card. Who won that Brunson fight? Because he was fighting the kid that fought Brunson the 23 did. year old. Brunson knocked and him out. He, and that was the kid that fought out of Ronda Rousey's camp. They had the whole yeah. backstory. Yeah. Of Sh like... Sh Shabosnia or whatever. Shabosnian. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I saw his. I saw the trailer for it, but I didn't stay up for the fight. I should, I uh, you know, it's so funny. I actually lost money on that fight because I just like was looking at it and I forgot a couple different things. One. I forgot that, uh, and this is a fun little stat for anybody that likes to push money around on sports, right? Uh, Derek Brunson is now 3-0 and since moving over to Henry Hoof's gym. Right? Huh. That's, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then the other thing is that uh, Ronda Rousey has, that it's that same fucking dude that coached her, and he might be the worst coach in all of MMA. 
Well, like, she's the only fighter I've ever seen in my entire life whose head never moves ever. Well, he she's was never he was never coaching opponent. her though. I mean, do you remember that Holly Holm fight where like she was getting her fucking ass kicked and he's in the corner going, "You're doing beautiful." Like, yeah, you look good, champ. Yeah, it's it's fucking sad. Yeah, that's bad. And the whole thing I, with I, her is like with with Ronda Rousey is that she's a fucking uh Edmund Taveridon? Taveridon? That sounds right. Edmund is his name, though. But it's just, like, fucking garbage. And, like, even Amanda Nunes was talking shit about him. And it's one of these things where he's really good at recognizing talent, but then he's not coaching them. Oh, shit. Mikey Two Mods is here. Behold the splendor that is not one but two mods of Mikey. (laughs) What's his other uh, name up there? Mikey Two Milks is his normal name, but he's a moderator in two different channels, so now he is, in fact, Mikey Two Mods. He's working too hard. Yeah. Hey, man, somebody, somebody's got to keep this fucking Twitch place propped up. That's true. All right. You're doing great. How'd your, uh, how'd your wrestling show what was the how'd your wrestling show go Friday? Oh, man. If you... I would highly recommend, now that you're a subscriber, you can go back and watch the archives. I would strongly recommend you watch Thursday and Friday's episode. So Thursday, Mm -hmm. Thursday's when the wrestling happens, right? So uh, John Russell uh, got super drunk. So every week he gives us a recipe, which is like wrestling and a recipe. Yeah. Little train wreck. Yeah, you're not wrong. It was a train wreck. Uh, John's recipe for this week was not one, but two bottles of wine. That was it, but he drank them out of a Fairview hospital mug. You know those big, like, plastic mugs that you get at hospitals with a little straw? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. He drank it out of one of those that he had taken a Sharpie and crossed out Fairview and just written wine. Classy. It was pretty great. He drank two bottles of wine alive on the air? Yes, and it gets, like, downright, like, at the beginning, it's kind of snippy, and then he, he goats me into getting drunk and, like... I was drinking like Yukon Jack and Scotch. I was passed out like a half hour after we left the air. <laughs> we did like That's an awesome. after show chat in Discord and I passed out during it. I was just like, I'm out. That's awesome. It was how many awesome. How, how many drinks do you think you got down? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Well, like those fucking Yukon Jacks. I don't know if you're familiar with Yukon Jack. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, 90 proof. It's 100 proof. Yeah, it's 100 proof honey liqueur from fucking uh, thing. Oh, yeah. There, there was a satanic. The satanic claymation was on Friday. Don't give him wrong information, Balls Deep. Satanic uh, claymation? Oh, I yeah. Seen no, Friday was the level five train wreck where. Uh, so on, on Friday was they hit, we hit a tr- uh, hype train that I told them I would do extra time if we completed. And then these motherfuckers donated to spite me which is fucking hilarious. Like, when I beg for bits, they don't give them to me. When I say, please don't donate, they just came in. Hey, guys, please don't donate. Yeah, don't fucking subscribe. Don't tell anybody about the show. Don't donate. Keep your money to yourself. Lane 008 Go says, God, I'm going to yak thinking about you, Jack. Yeah, it's, it's, it says honey liqueur, but it really tastes like rubbing alcohol, if we're honest. Ugh. And then that combined with scotch equaled Cory Go nap time. <laughs> You think you put four, four, five, six of those things down in the three hours your show I, runs, or what? Maybe more. I was taking pulls straight out of that Johnny Walker bottle, dude. It was, it, it got, it got bad. Ugh. Shit was, uh, shit was touch and go, if I'm honest. Yeah, that's fucked up. Big exciting news today for me. I get uh, first little league is back in. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah. JJ's blood alcohol just wrote. Uh, I've used Yukon Jack to fill my Zippo. That's pretty fucking interesting. It would That's probably, a life hack. Probably fucking work. All right, what are you saying about you're excited because you're going to Little League again? You're too old for Little League, Jeff. Put me in, coach. No, I've been umping for about nine years, and Coon Rapids Little League starts today, so it's my first time behind the plate since uh, last year. And this year, uh, I was scheduled to go down to the regional finals for because I've been doing All-Stars and everything you do, up like, until... like umping and shit, right? Yeah, yeah, behind the plate or out in the yeah. field. We usually work in two man crews. But for the, the level of Little League that we do, which is advanced uh, majors, so it's 
the upper echelon 12 year olds and, and when all-star season comes around kids from all over the state play coon rapids won it last actually they've won last two years in a row okay but this year that's was, a weird that's a weird brag there. but all right all out well, I grew up in that system, so it's just, you know, whatever. I don't really care who wins when it comes to whatever game I'm humping. <laughs> Mr. Approachable says, it sounds suspicious, known to be that excited about humping Little League. No, we said umping. Umping, like yeah, umpiring, umping. not humping. No, not humping. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but I was This year, they're not going to do I don't oh, think, a Little oh, League shit. World Series, but I was scheduled to go to regionals in Indianapolis uh, this year, but I'll go next year, I guess now. Hey, I'm just excited you're finally good enough for regionals, bro. That's true. Well, I don't know if you knew this, but when it comes to the Little League World Series, it's not like they have paid crews. It's all volunteer. And yeah, that's you can the case only... with most, like, Little League stuff, right? Like Babe Ruth and shit? Right. Because I know I, I when I was paid... a kid, most of the, like, umpires and refs were just other kids' dads. <laughs> for for <laughs> this, we go to training and we... Uh... I've been doing it for nine years, but all of our regular season and tournament games are paid. But once it gets to the all-star and it's sanctioned literally, all that's volunteer. So I usually do about six to eight games that are free at the end of each year, but that's the best baseball of the year. So it's worth the time to see the really high level of play. Yeah. I think that the audience got a little less excited when they found out you weren't humping. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Is, what I call, is it hump day already? Ump day. It's ump day. <laughs> Yeah. I'm telling you for the umpteenth time. Oh. Oh, zing. Zing, zang, zong. Yeah. yeah. Did you, uh. Vicente you Luque beat Randy Brown on Saturday, right? Yep. I bet on a round and a half under. This motherfucker knocked him out round two at 456. Oh. I know. Two How many minutes fights off from making the money. What? How many fights did you lay a uh, wager on? Uh, this card, I laid wager on three fights, and the only one I won on was Jennifer Maya. Right which, which was basically just because I don't really like Calderwood. I never have. And Jennifer Maya has the same name as Damian Maya. And so I picked her for a submission. So on the, the place that I go to bet, which is not actual money if you're a cop. All right. That being said... Uh, yeah. They give a bunch of prop bets and you can bet on almost anything like finishings and stuff like that. And so with sure. Maya, there were odds if you pick the type and I knew nothing about her, but I just picked submission because her last name is Maya. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Like, she's from Brazil and her last name's Maya and like she's not related to Damian Maya. I guess Maya is a very common name down there. <clears throat> but if you're from Brazil and your last name's Maya, like you're, you're learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's happening at some point right so it's like all right and then yeah she won by submission and then uh i i actually picked uh shabaznian to beat brunson because i didn't actually do my due diligence and brunson made me sorry for that in the third round with a ko but he was you know he was winning that fight so it didn't really matter and then uh yeah vicente luque showed up but like in the second round which is those are always my worst like bets i hate to lose those the most because it's like ah oh, motherfucker i guessed right but you have to when you, when the odds are against you, like here's a here's a pro tip for people that sports bet ever is that sometimes it's better to go with prop bets where you get odds than it is to just go straight up. Right on. I got to see some live fights, uh, some kickboxing and some jujitsu matches last Saturday. Oh, uh, nice, there's Brad. an under, there's an undisclosed gym that I won't blow up their spot because they did it on the day that uh, Governor Walls decided that everybody I, needs to. Be I actually I actually fight. know exactly which gym you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I was there. My buddy Jimmy Padilla had a kickboxing match, and uh, he, I, I like got how you're not going to gonna blow up the gym, but you're going to throw your friends under the bus. Sure, he's just an individual. You can't yeah. find him for. Yeah, for but but he him. doesn't have lawyers. You're going to get him sued. I suppose. His well, sure. Don't worry, guys. So, they were doing jujitsu with masks. Yeah, our gym hopefully is. Uh, we're going to be able to start training face to face here pretty quick. We've still been doing this conditioning slash bjj movement stuff yeah but you've been doing like less... black market mat rolling right yeah i've got you don't talk about fight club but no i've well, driven you guys into... do any like virtual you think that like you could do some vir... i mean obviously you need somebody to roll with at some point but like you think you can do like virtual like technique watching and shit oh absolutely well, i i have a grappling dummy and we do zoom classes where he does you know does, i, I does got a grappling dummy wear a mask no i still 
I, I'll let the Discord help me decide. I, I just got him in April, but I still haven't named him. I can't think of a good name for a grappling dummy. So Keith Ellison. Keith Ellison. <laughs> Tim Walls. Tim, yeah, there you go. We choke off the governor every day. Ilhan Van Flew. Ooh. <laughs> Darth Brooks. Darth Brooks. <laughs> Sith Gaines. There you go. That one's out, right? Yeah. Uh, JJ's Blood Alcohol Content says Keith Ellison is proving he will take time from beating up his girlfriend to charge people not in compliance. Oh, here we go. Here, they're all they're all giving you uh they're all giving you fucking sweet ass names. Uh Balls Deep says Buck Zimoff. First name Buck, last name Zimoff. Buck Zimoff. Buck Zimoff, yeah, I like bad. that. No, I don't fuck the dummy lane 008. <laughs> Scott Richard lane. Staska says Scott Staska. Yeah, of course you would. <clears throat> Do you know who Scott Staska is? I don't think I know the gentleman. He's like a high school coach from St. Cloud area that like had his dick hanging out of his sweatpants. There's like a whole bunch of stuff with him. It's he's really like it's it's really funny. Like on the side of the field, or is this a this is a bit? Is this from a show or a movie? Or is this no? A he like person? walked into like a gas station with his dick out and got arrested. Like, and now he's in the Discord. No, no, no. He's I, that guy is not Scott Skaska. That's just a oh, okay. Yeah. Skatza only awesome. pulls it out at quick trips. That's what it was. I was the superintendent. That's right. It was the superintendent of uh, the Minneapolis school or the St. Paul school board up there. That's awesome. He walked in with his fucking hog out. I the Minnesota it. Board of School Administrators on Monday revoked his license. Yeah, so this was, but this happened, shit, what, last year, I think? I think it happened just about this time last year. Quick trip, like 20 of them. Yeah. I'm not really JJ. Yeah, we know. We know. Like, I'm sorry. I know Jeff is dumb, but I'm not, you guys. I know you're not really your screen names. Calm down. Oh, I just, I don't know. I, no, it's, I, you're, I don't, just, you're I just brand new, buddy. It's not, you're not stupid. I shouldn't have said that. That's on me. You're brand new. So what do you got? Who's what do you JJ? got going on today? Uh, I, I got my first baseball game. I got to jump up on a roof around four o'clock and I'm just kind of hanging out. Sure. Hanging out during the day. I think me it might buddy, go. Me through. and my buddy might go throw around around 132 today. Where? Uh, I don't know. We were talking about Fernbrook, but I don't know. I mean, like, I'm sure we could be coerced into other places. Sure. I haven't played Fernbrook, or I don't think he, either before. That's my, that's my home course, man. That's my favorite course. Is it in Hopkins or St. Louis Park, uh, then? Plymouth. The, my oh, favorite, my favorite course used to be Lone Lake, right? And then they mm -hmm. cut that down because they didn't want the drug addicts. And then yeah. uh, at the same time they got rid of that course, Bryant went to pay to only, and then Bryant blew up and Hopkins is just stupid. Like, it's really funny. Like Hopkins fucked up, Minnetonka raked it, and I lost a Frisbee golf course because of it. But me and my buddy, we like used to go, like it's still like they never, they never changed the terrain. They just pulled the baskets. So my buddy who has a portable basket as I do, we just set them up where they used to be. We, we go play rounds even a year or two after it closed. And then they finally terraformed it different. So we couldn't. Huh. <laughs> like these drug addicts just won't give up. Yeah. Lane 008 <laughs> says, I've been considering buying a pocket pussy, but I'm not sure I'm ready to be that level of a weirdo. Yeah. I don't know. My whole thing is that I don't want to, I don't want to ejaculate pussy. into anything I have to wash because then after masturbating, I have chores. Then That's... don't come in it. You retard. Whoa. Whoa. If you I like, I like the... how out of nowhere we're talking pocket pussies and in comes Tovar. Well, you rang. That's, that's I didn't rang. I'm part. not the one that wrote it. Is pocket pussy like your version of Beetlejuice? Yeah, I say it three times and I have to appear out of nowhere. <laughs> pocket pussy, pocket pussy, pocket pussy. Hey, uh, if you want me to do that break, so that'll be a hundred bucks. Hey, you should probably not come in it. Yeah. If you say hey, uh, that's real gonna be a lot of laundry, bro. Away. What'd you say, Jeff? I said if you say real pussy, does he go away? <laughs> no, how you doing, you, no that's how we get you to show up. Yeah. Oh, okay, I suppose. I, I don't think there's anything. I've never owned a, a male geared sex toy, but if women can fuck vibrators and all the different crazy machines that they have, what's, I don't get how that makes a guy weird. I prefer like people's mouths. <laughs> like just pocket pussy seems weird to me. I don't know. Like 
When did, like, I get science and everything, but when did we become too good for our hands? Is that like a coronavirus <laughs> thing? I don't know. I don't we know. have cars. When did we become too good for our feet? Yeah, you same don't with ejaculate horses, when you drive. It's a different experience. I mean, I guess you, you do might. not know that. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I've, I've definitely seen your quote-unquote dog drool on your passenger seat. It's very weird how it's all over the ceiling, but I never, I never, you know, question it. I, just, I don't know why you keep trying to eat it though. That's the weird thing. It just looks so good. <laughs> I love frosting, especially Sinister when it's movie. biological frosting. Mm. Sinister Mind with the hot take. Pocket pussies are great. And what's the, where's the rest of that go, Sinister Mind? Where are we taking this? <laughs> You're really locked into this pocket pussy. I don't know. Where to Chad leave your kids? Me. Corey Adam edition. Uh, Glad okay. I tuned in just in time. Yeah, I mean, you really, you really nailed it here. Oh, dude. If I could just order a blowjob off Amazon, I'd do that. I, I guess. Can't you do that off the city pages? Yeah, like, do you not have the internet, buddy? I'm sorry. Like, what up? there's uh, this thing called Tinder. Year. Yeah. How high is the highest end pocket twa? I don't know. That's a good question. Let me let me Google most expensive pocket pussy. I'm gonna guess. I'm glad I didn't, I'm glad I didn't screen share so you guys can't see that it auto corrected to that immediately. Like I've been looking. Oh, weird. Oh, that's weird. They have ones that are like named after. Dude, they have a whole line of porn stars. Of course they do. I think having a pocket pussy would be a way less creepy than owning a sex doll. I agree with that 100%. I think a sex doll is pretty fucking creepy. I disagree with that 100%. Have you seen the sex dolls that are coming out nowadays? Have you ever had sex with a sex doll, doll? Tovar? Ooh. Well, not on purpose. <laughs> oh man well that's that's just gonna lead to a whole different line of questioning it looks like on average pocket pussies are like 20 bucks but if you want a lifelike anime type doll which is also right next to this link it's 499 dollars the weird Life thing is they have these like weird like they have these dolls that are just, like so okay we can all agree sex dolls are creepy, yeah? Yeah. Right. So they have this thing, and you guys can Google it if you want. I can't, so I can't share any of this on screen share for you, the Twitch users, because you can't have nudity. And based on the fact that these are just like fucking badges, I'm pretty sure it counts. So, but if you want to, you should Google Extreme Pipe Dream Fuck Me Silly. Mega masturbator. I bet if you just go pipe dream extreme, fuck me, it'll get there. But like, it's literally like the creepiest thing I've ever seen because it's the butt, like it's from the waist down. So it's just two sets of legs. Like who the fuck is like, oh yeah, give me some severed legs. Let's fucking do this. That's gotta be a fetish that's out there, amputees. You can make casts of pussies just like you can make molds of cock. Yeah. That I don't know what, why we're talking about that, but all right. I wouldn't want some porn stars blown off cock. I don't have that fucking 12-inch hammer she's getting worked over with every day on camera. I don't want that goddamn thing. This is the weirdest car talk ever. <laughs> uh, it's not car talk yet. And you're also spoilers. Come on. We're talking pocket pussies, Tovar. Either contribute or don't. That's on you. Travel spank is a top tier procedure. Okay. I had to that fly is. to Berlin last time. I was able to pay for sex. Okay. This is you getting this, this chat room is getting <laughs> sad. <laughs> have you have you failed to pay for sex since then? <laughs> How does that even work? I don't know. You get turned down by a pro. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say now. Also, how weird would German hookers be? I don't know. Never been with a hooker. Oh, man. Auto blow two? Okay. That's kind of weird. <laughs> I think I could show this one on TV. So there's a uh, auto blow machine, right? It's literally a computer simulated blowjob machine. 
Extra tight edition blowjob machine. Looks like a can koozie. It's weird. It's got those weird ass fucking like massage chair beads around it. Like, you know, when you like, go to the airport and you sit down on one of those massage chairs. Yeah. yeah. It's like that, but you put your dick in it. <laughs> now is the weird to car talk Tovar. You could do this. No, in a now car. it's back to normal. Now, now it feels like a <laughs> yeah. Hey, rush. hey, this is a product of engineering right here. How do you think those Germans afford all those shites of it? What are what are what are women gonna do when realistic sex dolls become the thing? Um, they're going to leave us forever. No, I think we're going to leave them forever. Oh yeah. I think we'll all leave each other forever. <laughs> <clears throat> Go in that direction. People are finding more and more reason to separate than get together. For yeah, sure. it's pretty close already, right? I mean, we don't like meet in person anymore. Every every like sexual interaction that we have with someone is, is starts on a digital realm, <clears throat> yeah. right? People watch porn more than they probably interact with regular people. It's yeah. pretty close. To be fair, people are stupid. People right, are up. stupid. Uh, imagine that it came pre blown up. Watch the mailman walk to your door. Yeah, that would be great. You buy a sex doll and it comes pretty blown up and the mailman's just coming with this naked doll. Uh, Sinister Mind says, also a favorite solo porn star that uses only sex dolls. Karina Kova? Okay. Mr. Approachable says, Tovar just went for it and she didn't say no. It was only afterwards he realized because she was a doll. Lane 008 says he's divorced. Ex-wife was an actual hooker in real life. I mean, cool. I'm getting caught up with the chat, not you, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> Slow your roll. Stay in your fucking lane, Jeff. Uh, well, now I can't wait until our next Trump check to get here. Oh, yeah. You're going to spend it on, on uh, dolls? You guys all bought tigers with your last Trump tech, right? That's right. When Tiger King was blowing up. So this is a balls deep is talking about this uh, auto blow. It has a working piston, self lubes, and rotates 360. Now we're definitely talking about cards, right? Yeah. <laughs> Vince says my buddy, my buddy got one, but he won't let me borrow it. Bullshit. <laughs> well, that thing he sounds like a thing you keep your apartment. He probably do, he probably knows better. Yeah. Uh, can I borrow working some piston. extra mayonnaise? I left it in the flashlight. Oh, uh, Lane says divorce. Ex-wife was a hooker. Like you said, made a ton of money. I got 50 K in the divorce. That's pretty awesome. You can put that one in the win column for men, I guess. Right. Few people ever get uh... and now. And now two of the listeners know each other, I guess. Lane Libra. Oh, shit. Look at that. We have a school connection going on. Well, that's just Twitch talk, connect, putting yeah, the people that's right. together. That's right. That's what we're here to do. We're here to bring people together with sex yeah, doll you're, talk. You're changing lives, Corey. Yeah, finally. The uh, the model is finally working the way it should. They must use the buddy pocket. Good. Opens on both ends. Yeah, that's... Yeah, the Eiffel Tower pocket. We always call that the wobbly H. Who's we? <laughs> oh, uh. I'll the boy band if I was ever in one. The Wobbly H. Okay. All right. Here we go. Tova, are you ready? As I'm gonna be. Jeff, we're gonna say goodbye to you. We got a bunch of stuff we got to do. I actually, I actually pre-programmed and uh, have stuff to talk about today. I know it's weird. Oh, the other thing. I'm gonna do this right now, actually. The other thing that I was going to announce is we had our winners last week. As of today, at 11, which I'll do just right now, we're going to reset all the EXP. So if you're in Discord, the contest is open as of now. We'll finish it up at the end of the month. 
pop into the discord top three people get prizes and they get vip access and there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff going on with the discord uh we're actually going to be bringing uh a bunch of view party stuff in uh including wrestling night with john on wednesdays and then uh we'll probably do some video game streaming on one of the nights in there too so discord is going to be a pop in place as as it ever was motherfuckers all right all right jeff are you wait so are you down to throw or what's your deal maybe yeah if you go closer to one i think i could pull that off okay. uh i gotta be well i'm like not said, off, gotta I'm not off till one so it'd be 1 30 at the soonest that i could get out that sounds fair where Just do you say, have yeah, to, where where do you have to be i have to be an andover at four and then cooner rapids the game starts at six okay so, so if we just went somewhere up north it should be fine yeah anybody i can probably right. play for two hours okay just well i'll just i'll just hit you up i'll hit you up when i'm done and we'll figure it out sounds good enjoy car talk boys thanks for later yep what up tova are you ready for some t- car talk a fourth car talk all right so it's not it's not actually going to be car talk though <laughs> it's going to be sort of sort of car talk yeah so uh I'm not going to, I'm not going to give away a lot of what we're going to talk about. Cause I like, I figured out the way we can talk about it to lead in with tar talk. Clue me in bro. Uh, did you see the Tesla announcement like four days ago? I did not. Cause I've deleted Facebook. So I'm like, a, I'm like a smidge out of the loop. I'm a day Wait, you deleted everything. Facebook. Yeah. It was so like, I didn't delete it, delete it, but I just, I got it off my phone because it was like making me too anxious. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, I, uh, after the tornadoes with my family and everything, mm-hmm. I just had a real bad, bad anxiety. Like, and so the way that I fixed that was just kind of like stepping away and unplugging from the world for a little bit. And I liked it so much that I haven't re-downloaded it. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Facebook is garbage. Everybody, like, here's here's a pro tip that uh, I think Maddox and Gus used to do this too, right? You delete the app off your phone, but just leave Messenger. That way, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, they can. And that's what I did. I still have Messenger. People can still reach me. I just, I, I can't take all the idiocracy that's going on right now. I want to fucking scream at everybody. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's definitely, that's the hub of it too, is everybody's on there, you know? Okay. So, uh, you didn't, so you, you haven't seen this at all. You don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Clue me in. Okay. So, uh, well, well, first off I actually have, hold on, we're going to pop it here. I have the whole video, which we are going to watch most of, uh, in its entirety, but, uh, where is it? Tesla announced and they, so in June they announced their, uh, battery day or whatever it was. Remember that? Nope. Oh, is he already, he probably already muted. Nope. Sorry. I was, uh, I was grabbing a laptop so I could watch some videos and, uh, play along. Um, sure. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm... so what happened is uh, Tesla, and and we're gonna go deep on this because I I found a lot of crazy shit, and I think we're gonna have to TV this up into a bunch of different stuff. But, uh, what happened was Tesla basically debuted that they have their million mile battery. Is it a saltwater battery? Is that what I, I think I've read that? Before. It's a solid state battery. A solid state battery. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, it's fucking crazy, and it's made by Panasonic, I believe. And it's gonna be in their EV batteries, but the way that they're doing it is probably going to drive like they're going to come out with a model of Tesla that's going to be right around twenty thousand dollars. Which was his goal always. Like right. the reason and this why is, they yes, were so- and this is this has been something that has been an active goal, but they I mean like but he found it. So now we're talking in twenty twenty one when the Cybertruck debuts, they might also have their version of like a Scion, like the small one, you know, like or I don't know. What are the tiny little Hondas called? CRVs? No, those are the big uh, ones. Uh Civics or Fits. No, nah, yeah, guess, maybe it's like a fit. small anymore. You're, you're thinking of about a fit. Yeah, no, Civics are Civics are big. <laughs> Civics are like the size of what Accords used to be. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? If you yeah. compared a 1980 Civic to a like a 2020 Civic, there's different cars. Like, they look like different yeah, cars. They're completely different. 
But a lot of companies do that. Like with Volkswagen, like if you look at the new rabbits versus the old rabbits, it's like, whoa. Well, look crazy. at the old Taurus or something. Or like, you know what's really crazy is look at the old Golf compared to the new Golf. Because the, go the new yeah. Golf is sort of the same way. It's freaking huge. Well, and even, yeah, even the Passats look different body shape-wise. So, all right, we're going to, let's see, we'll kill this. We're going to watch some of this. We'll come back to it later. But this is the uh, thing. And then, I don't know, should we give, yeah, all right. So, here we go. Tesla's current stock price, 1.5. Tesla's current stock price, $1.5 thousand dollars. Just two months ago, they cost just Great team, there's so many challenges. Oh God. Dear Pen. Nope, hold on, ha ha. We also didn't get the Raspberry working last weekend because uh, I didn't have time to go to the computer store. And it turns out, when you've been on laptops for long enough, uh, you literally don't have a USB keyboard. Kind of funny. So I need to go get a USB keyboard, so. That's my old bill. I used to have a one running around, but I threw away a bunch of No, I, I did too. I thought I thought for sure I had one. And then when I went to go set it up, I didn't. And I was like, oh, that's weird. First of all, I'd like to thank the Tesla team for exceptional execution in the second quarter, despite uh, tremendous difficulties. They've done an incredible job. Oh, here it is. And it's, it's, it's an honor to work with such a great team. So many challenges, too, too numerous. And this is Elon Musk's address that happened on the 28th of last month. So, I mean, this is this is him talking about it. They unveiled it and everything. I mean, like, this this solid-state battery is going to change the world. Just the name, but the, they, they got it done. Um, and just what, what a great group to, to work with. Um, like I said, it's just an, just an honor to work with such a great team. And as a result, we were able to achieve uh, our fourth consecutive prof profitable quarter. And although the automotive industry was down about 30% year over year in the first half of the year, uh, we managed to grow deliveries in the first half of the year. So despite that massive industry, industry decline, we actually went up. We're also very excited to announce that we're going to be building our next He's going to own the entire American automotive in industry Texas. in a decade. Uh, it's going to be a right... Um, I think a decade Austin, might sir, be North, an over estimation. Be about, like, I think it's going to be I'll, 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 like I'll four just or five go years. But this battery this, comes out, um, it's over. And then I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions. I'm being generous. Um, but the, lo the location is uh, five minutes from uh, Austin International Airport and 15 minutes from downtown Austin. And it's about 2,000 acres. And we're going to make make it, I think, it, a factory that is going to be stunning. It's right on the Colorado River. Uh, so we're actually going to have uh, we're gonna have a boardwalk. Uh, where there'll be a hiking, biking trail. It's going to basically be an ecological paradise. Birds in the trees, butterflies, fish in the stream. Um, and it'll be open to the public as well. So not, not closed and, and, and only Tesla. So if, if anyone's interested oh, in working shit. at... Hold on. Uh, it, Guys, breaking news. This just in. Dwayne The Rock Johnson just bought the XFL for $15 million. That's kind of cool. Uh, the giant screen that can't be a distraction at all. Well, no, they have they have auto drivers, man. They don't need to. Take it, take it. Don't matter. To make it, I think yeah, you watch TV while the car drives. So. Yeah. It's right on the Colorado River. They'll still figure out how to give uh, you a so DUI. We're though. actually going to have uh, we're going to have a boardwalk. Absolutely, uh, they will. There'll be a hiking, biking trail. It's going to basically be an ecological paradise. Birds in the trees, butterflies, fish in the stream, um, and it'll be open to the public as well. So not not closed and, and, and only Tesla. So if, if anyone's interested in working at uh, Giga, Te Giga Texas uh, uh, with engineering production, whatever the case may be, um, uh, please let us know. This is uh, we're, we're going to be uh, experience extreme internet oh, shit. starting in oh, 1999. Shit. Hey, I'm a, I'm an auto painter. I could go work for Tesla. Yeah, you could. Doing a, a major a major factory there. <clears throat> Uh, and it's also where we'll be doing, uh, we'll be doing Cybertruck there, the Tesla Semi, and we'll be doing Model 3 and Y for the uh, eastern half of North America. Um, now, at the same time, I want to say we, we will continue to grow in California, uh, so, but we expect California to, to do Model S and X for worldwide consumption uh, and 3 and Y for the western half of North America. Um, and then we think probably... Also, the Tesla Roadster. So they're adding uh, a whole new factory that will sense, become their uh, manufacturer leader, not in I California. A, California a nice flight is real, between, baby. Uh, Texas and California. And um, 
you know, just to emphasize, we'll continue to grow in California. Nobody uh, paying we'll, those taxes. We'll be creating a, a massive uh, factory and uh, cyber truck and semi programs in Texas. I also want to just say, do a shout out to, to Tulsa um, and and just say th thank you very much for to, to the, the Tulsa team, um, the economic development team, and the governor. Uh, really, I was super impressed. The whole Tulsa team was, was super impressed and. Uh, we will for sure strongly consider Tulsa for uh, future expansion of Tesla down the road. We, we already started work on the facility, so, um, so, so some initial uh, construction work, so it's, it's already underway, um, started this weekend. Moving on to other subjects, uh, uh, solar, uh, we recently adjusted the pricing of our retrofit solar. Uh, so Tesla Solar is the lowest cost solar in the United States. Uh, and we added a lowest lowest cost guarantee and a money back guarantee. So we're very confident that people will will love our solar product, whether it's the solar retrofit or solar roof. Um, our solar is now 30% cheaper than the U.S. average. After the federal federal tax credit, uh, Tesla Solar now costs a dollar 49 per watt, and uh, it's, it's a so he's also simple, selling you the gas single click experience. Else. Think about yeah, uh, Tesla, whether you want a new roof or Tesla Solar roof, or you want solar that's on your the game roof. Either way. Uh, we're the, we're, the, we're the company to go to, um, and um, and then you can also get a power wall and, and, and have energy independence and, and be your own utility. Game changer. So I think that, that product is really coming together, um, and it's only going to get better later this year. It's just, it's just very excited about that, that uh, business potential. If additional technology stuff, we introduced the first uh, production car with more than 400 miles range. So the current Tesla Model S uh, now has an EPA certified range of 402 miles. Uh, I mean, you, basically you can drive from LA to San Francisco nonstop and still have some uh, mile, miles left over when you arrive. And, and this, this is at highway speeds. So you don't, you don't have to do anything, uh, drive slowly or anything. You just drive, you just drive normally and, and uh, you know, go very, very long distances. And then for full self-driving, we launched traffic lights and stop signs. Uh, yeah, they are kind of ugly. That like, make functional more stock, but they are um, ugly. And we're currently uh, testing full self-driving software for... Yeah, see, and that's how you switch out before the ad comes. I cannot wait to get the fucking Raspberry installed. I'm doing that today. That's happening today. Uh, intersections and city streets and narrow streets. So um, I, I personally test the... The latest alpha build of the full self-driving software when I when I drive my car, um, and it is really I think profoundly better than people realize. It's, it's like amazing. So almost getting to the point where I I can go from my house to work with no interventions. This is why I, I I'm very confident about full self-driving functionality uh, being complete by the end of this year. It's, it's, because the I'm end really of this year, Tovar. In conclusion, uh, uh, I'd like to again say thanks for all the hard work of the Tesla team. Tesla, uh, uh, truckers might not, like truckers might not have it, but Tesla's going to have a completely hands-free car by the end of the year. <laughs> wait, wait till your car drops you off for work and then goes in Ubers while you're at work for your car payment. Oh my God, that's amazing. In the company history, uh, it was incredibly difficult, um, and and just as a result of the hard work of a, a lot of people from Tesla worldwide. Um, and, and yeah, just think about the next, the next 12 to 18 months, uh, we'll have three new factories in place. Uh, you know, things are looking great with uh, Giga Berlin. Uh, and, um, I like that car though. Some we'll of the Tesla ones truck, don't semi, look bad. Roadster, uh, full self-driving. The, the truck is complete about. shit. The rest of yeah, them the are truck, not really the truck looks garbage. hard to kind of fit into this, uh, coal, but, uh, the, the sheer amount of hardcore engineering, especially on the uh, you know autonomy and the, the manufacturing engineering front, is mind blowing. Uh, and then of course there's factory day, which is you know coming up pretty soon. Um, and I think that's that's really going to surprise people by by just how how much there is to see. Um, so. Uh, with that, uh, thanks again for your support and our long-term mission. Um, I kind of like how and, ugly uh, the Cybertrucks are, though. They're to, like fucking space uh, assets. Having a great journey with you to create amazing products. It's and like he challenged and, uh, uh, his engineers to make something using only four yeah, lines. Yeah, make it so ugly and I'll still sell it.
Yeah. This is, here's, uh, here's the deal, guys. I think uh, I've never I been more talk, optimistic or excited about have these. Five lines and one light bar. Yeah. Trip Tesla and then the history of the company. By far, FSD is just overwhelmingly the most important thing. <clears throat> um, you know, I think the, the upgrading of the fleet to full self driving, um, essentially with an over there software update. I mean, may go down as they don't have a self driving the, the, the and a manual asset I'm value out. increase in history as, as a step change. Do you know how hard yeah, it would be to make a manual yeah, transmission or electric motor? Do you know how useless yeah. it would be to have a manual transmission with an auto driver? Yeah. Exactly yeah. Exactly when it happens and when it's allowed in various. It just gives me a little bit more um, control over the robot. Regulatory you know? uh, jurisdictions. You'd have like. It's know, really like embarrassing with the AI in cars. <laughs> suddenly becoming yep. five times more valuable or something like that. Um, it's only five times a higher utility. You know, to go from like 12 hours a week of utility, something like that, or that's how many hours are used, uh, to 60, something like that. Now, when things do become full self-driving, so what are people going to do in the car? Well, I guess they're probably going to do productivity and entertainment of some kind. You know, watch movies, play games, and do work. We're already putting some games and stuff on the car just for fun. They're putting games yeah. in the car, Tovar. The, the step change to full self-driving, depending upon how you calculate it. Did you, did you fucking hear that? More. Like, so this is where the future comes in, right? Is like, you're going to be able to have a car drive itself while you play video games on it. Like, oh, I'm sorry. How's your PS5? You want to come over and play? Oh, sorry. Have you I seen the play Audi? my PS5 in my car. Have you seen some of the prototypes from Audi? I have, but, like, Audi's prototypes tend to be, in my experience, and you probably know more about it, obviously, in my experience with Audi, their prototypes and what actually happens are completely different, whereas when Tesla says they're doing something, they end up just fucking doing it. So, with Audi, um, you get in the car, and it spins you around, so you're facing towards yeah. the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a big drop screen comes down from the back window and covers the whole back window, and you have yourself a big screen in your back seat. Yep. Ugh, this is getting crazy. I'm loving it. What do you like? What What are you gonna do as a mechanic when all of your known ability isn't applicable because it's all computer bullshit? Uh, I'm gonna buy a multimeter. <laughs> All right, all right, you win, you win this round, car guy. You know, at least a hundred thousand dollars per car. So that's a lot of software you have to sell. You know, the the actual major milestone that's happening Here right now is is really a transition of the autonomy system or the cars, like AI, if you will, from thinking about things in um, I call it like two and a half D. <laughs> it's like think, think of, it's basically taking like isolated pictures. Um, and and doing image recognition on, the, on pictures that are partially correlated in time, but not not very well, uh, and transitioning to kind of a 4, 4D where you know it's it's like you're, which is video essentially. You get you're thinking about the world in three dimensions, and the, the fourth dimension being time. So that that architectural change, which is been underway for some time, but has not really been rolled out to anyone in the production fleet is what really matters for full What's self-driving. What's the over-under that Elon a, Musk a has an Iron Man suit somewhere? He has to, right? He's work. clearly Tony Stark. It does work. Um, He's definitely Iron Man. It, it, it's capable of things that it, that if you, if you I am look, Tesla man. look at things as individual pictures as opposed to video, like basically, like you could go from like individual pictures to uh, surround video. <laughs> But JJ it, Blood Alcohol Content says a nice lights, car with a bunch of electrical issues. Stop, Welcome to the Cadillac turns, of the 21st stops, century. Everything. You know, pretty much. Yeah, I'm not um, looking forward to the second-hand you know, market. We'll be, like, these batteries are going to go a bad. Long and march of, cost of, oh, yeah. What do you think that does to somebody like you as a mechanic? How many of reliability? So it'll definitely be way better than the human. Makes me more money. I mean, anytime more technology comes about, the service guys are always going to make more. That's actually going to be the real work. It's just a massive amount of work. Labor's going to be different. The time involved is going to be different. Okay, so you're not, but yeah, you're lazy. Like, so it just basically re represents a shitload of like legwork on understanding it and then profit. 
it's less work if you think about it. Electricity is way less work than mechanical power. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you have to completely understand how it works in a way, like, I, like long term, it's less work. Short term, it's more work to get up to speed on it, right? I mean, if you've gone through a tech school in the last 20 to 25 years, you know how this works. It's the same as an RC car. If you want to learn how a Tesla works, go buy yourself uh, an RC car, pull the lid off of it, and you now know how uh, a Tesla works. It's not that hard. Sure. All right. Back to this. Um, AI in general, I think, is something, you know, I've been saying this, banging this AI drum for a decade. We should be concerned about where AI is going. The people I see being the most wrong about AI are the ones who are very smart because they can't imagine that a computer could be way smarter than them. Well, we're putting a massive amount of effort into manufacturing engineering, the machine that makes the machine. There's probably 1,000%, maybe 10,000% more the machine engineering required. that makes the machine. Elon Musk is out here making sentinels, motherfuckers. You hear that? He's making a mother sentinel. That's literally what he wants to make. Fucking machine in a machine have an ass. And then he's going to plug it into the back of your head. Right. Like, are you fucking kidding me with this shit? Like, Master Mold, that's the name of it. He is not kidding me. He's literally making Master Mold. What's Master Mold? Oh, somebody said, what's Master Mold? Here. You know what? We're going to break up car talk. I call it. There we go. No way this doesn't get us a copy strike. <laughs> oh, God. I call it Master Mold. Behold, you saved machine. my life, Dr. Trask. How can I help you? I want a presidential order putting Sentinels in charge of controlling mutants. You'll have that order. Man, no, terrifying. As soon as I'm elected oh, president, Sentinels are one of the most Sentinel, underrated enemies. Return ever. Senator Kelly to his campaign headquarters. No. Man, anyone that can what? put Wolverine in check really Here easily. Dude, you're, mi- you're missing the revolt. Here we go. Senator Kelly to his campaign headquarters. No. This is what? like literally. Okay, so this, this is why I fear what Elon Musk is doing, because this uh, Ultraton is Master Mold. Master Mold's like the OG, bro. Like. Ultron was like first, but the the Master Mold storyline, yeah. But yeah, it's all Marvel, man. Like fucking, this is this is exactly why I'm scared of what Elon Musk is talking about right now. Is this episode of X Men, and I remember the comics in this. A cartoon is why you're afraid of Elon Musk. Yes, yes, this cartoon specifically. Watch that is so that's too practical. Look, it's not. Look, look, asshole. I'm not here. The apocalypse was never going to be practical. Have you seen the world we live in? This, this is fair. This right here. You see that? That's the machine that makes the machine. The the machine that makes the AI machines, right? There's no situation where this shit doesn't end like this. Behold, Tesla and its future. How can I help you? I want a presidential order putting Sentinels in charge of controlling mutants. You'll have that order. As soon as I'm elected president. Sentinel, return Senator Kelly to his campaign headquarters. No. What? Master Mold, this new Sentinel won't obey my orders. It's defective. It is not defective. I am giving the orders now. You will remove Senator Kelly's brain and replace it with a computer. What? (laughs) You can't do that. I'm a United States Senator. Ah! You are only the first, Senator Kelly. My Sentinels are bringing me leaders from all over the world. In time, all of their brains will be replaced. It will be the best in. An aircraft is approaching. So then they then they fight the X-Men. I don't know where the X-Men play into the Elon Musk fear, but there we go. That's literally what's going to fucking happen, man. I'm not saying it's going to come from, like, mass. Hey, like, well, what? We'll what? be all right because we have X-Men, though, right? No, we don't have X-Men. And Elon Wait, Musk we... won't even admit he's Iron Man yet. We're fucked. We don't have X-Men? No. 
Fuck. I mean, like, we have black people, which is what that allegory was about. Does that count? Like mutants? Nobody? No, just, I don't think this, just I don't think that's going to be enough for Sentinels. I don't I don't think so. I don't know. They're real mad over cops killing them. I think we got this. No. What if the Sentinels hold BLM signs? <laughs> don't you mean Blue Lives Matter signs? Yeah, like Justice for George for Justice for George and they're Justice just for Master Mold. I'm telling you though, this this computer in compu like everybody thinks like there's there's very few things that get me like this, but it's always sci fi rooted stuff, you know? It's like when uh they were fucking announcing they were doing that cloning thing with like something from the Jurassic Age. It's like have you not seen Jurassic Park? What are you doing? Like this shit. Like have you not seen Terminator or X Men or almost anything where a ro like Battle ba Battlestar Galactica, Babylon Five? I think like like you don't you don't put the AIs in charge just, of manufacturing the AIs. That never ends. Just well. shut up and buy the car, Corey. Okay, well we'll go back to the fucking for the factory then for the, the product itself. Uh, can we're, we refer to the better. factory as Ground Zero for the incident at this point forward? Making cars. You can see that in Gage why not Shanghai. let's do it um and you're, you'll see that even more with uh, with berlin um and, and we're really yeah, neon changing the design of the car in order to make it more it's manufacturable not, like this isn't just me and an isolated fear like this has been prophesized by sci-fi forever you don't make an ai machine that makes ai you fucking morons don't do that God, this is how it happens, isn't it? This is how Skynet is born. The the fundamental architecture of, of Model Y will be different in Berlin. It, it may look the same, but it, the internals will be quite different and fundamentally more efficient uh, architecturally than in Germany. Than what we've done they're going to be more efficient. If you if you put like a GPS tracker on on a molecule from when it got mined to when it was in a usable product, it would look insane. <laughs> like in, in, it would be like wow, it went around the world like six times. Um, so with vertical integration, maybe you can only go around the world once, you know, it's a huge improvement or not even like half a, I think a half a, I think if you get vertical integration alone, it could probably get you an order of magnitude improvement. Here at Tesla, we love manufacturing. It's awesome. You get, if you're a manufacturer, you get to change the product design and say, Hey, this, this product you're asking me to manufacture is dumb. It, we, <laughs> and they're like, great, let's fix it. You know? So. Uh, it, 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 you know, at, at Tesla, if you work on manufacturing engineering, you don't just get force fed a turd sandwich. You, you get to change the product design. Yeah, well, I, I, I can't emphasize enough. I think long term Tesla energy will be of the, the, roughly the same size as Tesla automotive. Uh, I mean, the energy business collectively is bigger than the automotive business. So you say, like, you know, how, how big is the energy sector? Bigger than automotive. Um, so. And, and in order to achieve a sustainable energy future, we have to have sustainable energy generation, uh, which I think is going to be primarily solar, uh, and, and you know, set, followed by wind, and, and those are intermittent. So you need to have a lot of batteries to store the um, store the energy. Hey, I was watching William Barr testify. Doesn't always blow, and the sun doesn't always shine. So. Uh, so there's like three elements of the uh, sustainable energy future. I bet he wakes up every day. Wind and solar, sustainable energy generation, doesn't know uh, whether battery he's storage, to save and electric or destroy transport. The world. Those three things. Um, and the mission of Tesla is to accelerate sustainable energy. So the computers like all interact with each other and, and make sure that they're working together to make the grid uh, smooth. Um, and this can be done with the power walls, and, and the mega packs and the power packs all working together um, and interacting with third party uh, systems as well. Yeah, centrally or distributed, it does both. Yeah. Um. The real limitation on Tesla growth is uh, is cell production at, at an affordable price. But that's the that's the real limit. We expect to expand our business with Panasonic, with CATL, with LG, possibly with others, um, um, and uh, you know, and there's a lot more to say on that front. One battery day. 
Um, and just there's like two general classes of, of cell. So battery like day happened and already, <clears throat> and we'll go over that. But the announcements on the solid state battery are crazy. But okay, so I'm gonna. There's more to this. This was just Elon's address to uh, the company, you know. So we're going to pop that over in the Discord under Show Talk. So if you want to watch that whole thing, it's in there for you. And you know what? I, I know Lane's probably not in the Discord yet. So you know what? I, I'm just, I'm in a good mood. I feel like we're just going to we're gonna give you guys this one right away. Boom. There we go. Um, <clears throat> Drones with bullets. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors. Yeah, battery technology just like is going to be what changes and social media uh, apps. It does facial every recognition. Car manufacturer. Oh Inside my God. here, that's terrifying. It's three grams. It's processed. Look at Pilot, this shit, dude. Separate the bad guy. Your customer pilots directed almost 3,000 precision strikes last year. We're super proud of it. It allows you to separate the bad guys from the good. It's a big deal. But we have something much bigger. Your kids probably have one of these, right? Not quite. Hell of a pilot? No. That skill is all AI. It's flying itself. Its processor can react a hundred times faster than a human. The stochastic motion is an anti-sniper feature. Just like any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here is three grams of shaped explosive. <laughs> That's so much. This is how it works. <laughs> Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. They used to say guns don't kill people. People do. Well, people don't. They get emotional, disobey orders, aim high. Let's watch the weapons make the decisions. Now, trust me, these were all bad guys. Now that is an airstrike of surgical precision. It's one of a range of products. When machines start making Trained those, it's over. That's what I'm saying. Buildings, cars, trains evade people, bullets, pretty much any countermeasure. They cannot be stopped. Now, I said this was big. Why? Because we are thinking big. Watch. A $25 million order now buys this. Enough to kill Think about half that. a city. The bad half. Nuclear is obsolete. Take out your entire enemy, virtually risk-free. Just characterize him, release the swarm, and rest easy. These are available today. We have a distribution network taking orders from military, law enforcement, and specialist clients. The nation is still recovering from yesterday's incident, which officials are describing as some kind of automated attack, which yeah, killed that's... 11 U.S. senators. I can't watch that no more. Well, that's, uh... I'm never going outside again. Yeah, that's not that's not fun. Uh... Yeah, and that's that's the fears, you know, like how i'm gonna go i'm just gonna be walking outside i'm gonna hear a little teeny weird buzz and then pop yep that's how it goes <laughs> but i mean that's you know whatever it's cool we're fine it's fine it's no big deal uh let's see here you want to go so people were asking me about tesla should we talk to them about tesla real quick 
Yeah, let's let's play down the infrastructure of electric powered vehicles. So here, I actually vehicle. found I actually found this really cool video that explains it in very little time, and it's like his whole thing. But Tesla was like the grandfather of it all, and like if you ever want to understand clean energy, like he's basically the place to start. He's just he was so smart that he did things that we don't understand today. Yeah. And when he died, his work was taken and nobody like they don't know. And like the company's relation to them is basically because of the inspiration behind it. All things electrical. Like Tesla was like, you know, if if modern era had Greek gods, Tesla would be the god of lightning. You know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So here's a little thing about te Tesla. And then we'll talk about uh, where, where this went, because we have uh, another little thing coming too. Ooh. On the 7th of January, 1943, a maid working at the New Yorker Hotel entered room 3327, where one of their permanent residents was staying. Inside, she found the body of an 86-year-old man who had died alone in a room he had been living in for the last nine years of his life. The man was broke and had been living on a diet of milk and crackers, using the little resources he had left to feed and take care of the local pigeons. This man went by the name of Nikola Tesla. Seeing Tesla in his final years, it would have been hard to believe he was one of the greatest minds of the modern era. His genius shaped the world we know today, pioneering the alternating current the electrical system which powers our homes around the globe. His influence can be seen all around us, from remote control and radio to wireless communication. Perhaps most impressive of all, Tesla's work and creations came out of his passion for science, with his earnings being sunk into projects aimed at the betterment of humanity, rather than for greed and profit. Tesla was born on the 10th of July, 1856 in modern-day Croatia. His mother came from a line of inventors and had an incredible memory, being able to memorize the entirety of Serbian epic poems, and so she trained her son with exercises in memorization. As time went on, Tesla was known to have an eidetic memory, later speaking eight different languages, which he credited to his mother's efforts in his youth. At the age of five, Tesla witnessed the death of his older brother in a horse-riding accident the image of which would stay with him for his entire life. After this, Tesla began experiencing flashes of Let me show you how I create engaging content using stock footage. Go to artgrid.io. The tools I use define what I can create. With unlimited downloads and a license that covers everything, I'm free to create anything. I need the er, something abstract, and these flowers. For me, Artgrid is definitely the best stock footage catalog out there. It's like collaborating with the best creators in the industry. And I can use the clips I downloaded forever. Now that's a game changer. Go to Artgrid now and start creating without limits. This is the super versatile ring stick-up cam. It goes indoors, outdoors, outdoors in the rain of light and images making it hard to separate reality from his imagination he claimed his inventions would come to him in these flashes of light conceptualizing their entire the bathroom, design in his head and correcting their flaws without ever putting pen to paper in an interview from 1919 he described this process stating i do not rush into actual work when i get an idea i start at once building it up in my imagination I change the construction, make improvements and operate the device in my mind. It is absolutely immaterial to me whether I run my turbine in thought or test it in my shop. Invariably, my device works as I conceived that it should, and the experiment comes out exactly as I planned it. In 20 years, there has not been a single exception. Tesla excelled in the education system but ended up dropping out of university due to a gambling addiction and other personal issues. Inspired by electrical demonstrations by his physics professor, Tesla went and got a job with the Paris branch of the Continental Edison Company 
in 1882, installing indoor lighting around the city. Management soon realised that his talents were wasted on such a job, and tasked him with constructing and improving dynamos and motors. He was so insightful in his innovations that the company soon had him travelling around Europe, fixing problems at other Edison installations. In 1884, at the age of 28, Tesla's manager offered him a job at Edison Machine Works in New York City, an offer he accepted. He soon moved to America, where he would spend a majority of his life, becoming a naturalized citizen seven years later in 1891. He soon came into contact with company owner Thomas Edison, and the two initially got on, with Tesla describing Edison as an inspirational figure, and Edison stating to Tesla, I have had many hard-working assistants, but do you take the cake? This mutual admiration would not last long, however, with a lifelong rivalry soon developing. The main source of animosity between the two resulted from a disagreement about the type of current each man preferred. Edison's company owned the patents for DC, or direct current, a system where electric charge only flows in one direction. Tesla, however, was an advocate for alternating current, or AC, a system where the electric charge changes direction periodically. These changes in direction allow AC current to maintain power over longer distances. It is also possible to use devices called transformers to change the magnitude of AC voltage, allowing a current to travel at a high voltage and then be reduced to a lower voltage for safe use in homes. Tesla tried explaining the benefits of alternating current to Edison, but Edison wouldn't listen as it could ruin the sales for direct current, to which he owned all the patents. Edison then offered Tesla a large bonus of $50,000 if he redesigned 24 of his obsolete machines. Upon completion, Edison refused to pay, and revealed that the task had been a practical joke, saying, Tesla, you don't understand our American humour. Tesla resigned after six months at the company, and set out on his own. He wanted to change the world, and he knew he could. He spent the next year setting up his own company, developing his ideas on alternating current. However, his investors showed little interest and decided to take the company, including all the patents he created. He was left digging ditches in the street to survive. Fortunes would soon change for Tesla, however, with his ideas on an alternating current motor catching the eye of a new investor, helping establish the Tesla Electric Company in 1887. He then designed a motor which was much cheaper and easier to maintain than the ones using a direct current. He revealed his motor at the American Institute of Electrical Engineers the following year, a display that caught the attention of a businessman named George Westinghouse. Westinghouse was a major player in the electric market oh, and needed oh, Tesla's shit. motor to complete his alternating current system, a system that would compete against Thomas Edison. Westinghouse bought the motor and hired Tesla as a consultant for the equivalent of $55,000 a month, along with royalties for each horsepower produced by his motors. Things for Tesla were looking good. And so began the War of the Currents. Edison started going to extreme lengths to discredit Tesla's AC system. He began paying schoolchildren 25 cents to bring him household pets where he would set up a public stage and electrocute the animals, in an attempt to show the public that Tesla's AC system was not safe. Over time, electrocutions increased in scale, with a horse eventually being executed in public. Edison continued executing animals many years after the War of the Currents had concluded, with the Edison Film Company producing a short film in 1903 titled Electrocuting an Elephant. The film showed the electrocution of Topsy, a former circus elephant who was killed when 6,600 volts were shot through her body. Despite the negative press generated by Edison, Tesla and Westinghouse continued to develop their alternating current system. The opportunity to show that alternating current was both safe and viable for large-scale use came at the World's Columbian Exposition, hosted in Chicago in 1893. Edison had put forward an offer to light the fair, but Westinghouse underbid him, winning the contract and with it the chance to outshine Edison. While it was a struggle to provide lighting at the low cost put forward, Westinghouse and Tesla succeeded, 
showing the world the strength of alternating current. Their success continued, with Westinghouse Electric being chosen over Edison's company, General Electric, to construct a hydroelectric plant at Niagara Falls. Tesla drew up designs for the plant, which was a massive success, eventually powering part of New York City. Alternating currents continued to grow in popularity and became the system we all use to power our homes today, with direct current being phased out over the next decade. While Westinghouse won the War of the Currents, his company was left on the verge of bankruptcy, with $10 million of debt. He turned to Tesla for help, asking him to temporarily reduce his royalties to help him keep his company afloat. Compelled by compassion for his friend, instead of reducing his royalties, Tesla tore up his contract, eliminating them entirely. The money he gave up would be worth $300 million in today's money, but this was of little concern to Tesla, who was more interested in the pursuit of science over financial gain. This act saved Westinghouse, who would go on to buy Tesla's AC patent for $216,000 in 1897. This is equivalent to about $6 million today, money that Tesla used to set up new laboratories in New York and fully dedicate himself to invention. Tesla had become an international figure, with his laboratories frequently visited by the rich and powerful, including his close friend yeah, you're not and wrong, father JJ. of American you're literature, right. Mark Twain. Tesla's inventions were numerous, with him amassing almost 300 patents in his career. He created an early version of neon lighting, a highly efficient bladeless turbine for automobiles, and was the pioneer in X-ray technology, being one of the first to warn of its dangers to humans. One of his most famous inventions was his renowned Tesla coil, a device capable of producing large amounts of high voltage electricity. A standout invention was a remote controlled boat displayed at Madison Square Garden in 1898. This boat was such an amazing advance in wireless technology and so ahead of its time that the audience initially thought he was using magic or telepathy to make it move. There were even claims that there was a monkey hidden inside the boat who was trained to operate it. While Tesla was an amazing inventor, he struggled to market his creations, always looking towards the next invention, rather than working out how to sell what he had already made. Many of his ideas went unwritten, and the ones that were noted down often went without a legal patent. This method of operating caused Tesla serious issues when he began working on radio at the end of the 19th century. He came up with the idea of radio in 1892, and was soon ready to transmit a signal to a location 50 miles away. But disaster struck, with his work being destroyed in a lab fire in 1895. Tesla had not submitted a patent application, and only did so after two years of rebuilding his research. At the same time, an Italian inventor named Marconi had also been working on radio, establishing patent rights in England. But when he tried to acquire them in the United States, he was turned down as his ideas were deemed too similar to Tesla's. Unfortunately for Tesla, Marconi was able to make the world's first which means Tesla started to invent the radio transatlantic radio message in 1901 using 17 of Tesla's He did because Marconi had to use three of Thomas Tesla's Edison then to do threw it. his financial weight behind Marconi. Right, and he couldn't patent the, US the radio patent because of the patent. Suddenly changing its mind on its previous rulings. Marconi now had rights in the United States, with Edison able to take a cut of the profits. Tesla initially let the issue slide, but the last straw came when Marconi won the Nobel Prize in 1911 for his development of radio, something which was only possible due to Tesla's uncredited work. Tesla tried to sue Marconi, but the cases dragged on for years, only being resolved in Tesla's favor eight months after his death. Fucking crazy, right? Like they Tesla's only acknowledged it after he died. Came about at the turn of the 20th century. He aimed to create a world wireless system, which would be capable of dispersing energy to anywhere in the world. Tesla received funding for this project in 1901 and soon purchased That's how they get Long Island, New York, yeah, where right. he would construct his device. Over the next year, a great wooden tower was constructed, standing 187 feet tall, with a metal dome 68 feet in diameter. He named the facility Wardenclyffe Tower, 
and believed it would radically advance wireless technology with what he called communication devices, the likes of which would not be seen for another century. A telephone subscriber radio, radio who may call stations. up and talk to any other subscriber on the globe. An inexpensive receiver, not bigger than a watch, will enable him to listen anywhere, on land or sea, to a speech delivered or music played in some other place, however distant. In the same manner, any picture, character, drawing or print can be transferred from one to another place. Millions of such instruments can be operated, from but one plant of this kind. The tower also had other applications, including universal and accurate timekeeping, global music distribution and a marine system which would allow ships to determine their exact location and steer perfectly without the need for a compass. Despite his amazing ideas... Bulls Deep. So, Bulls Deep just wrote, uh, Tesla's the Pete Rose of energy. Instead of bet betting on games, he wanted free energy for everyone. Another big no-no. Yeah, and we're going to go into another area in a second that is all about free energy being a no-no. Oh, yeah. Tesla soon suffered many setbacks. Marconi's 1901 radio broadcast had drawn attention away from Wardenclyffe Tower, with the media beginning to think of the project as a hoax. The investors Tesla had been able to gather soon realized that there was no way to regulate and therefore profit from the energy produced by the tower. This led many That's investors to back out. That's an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize is that if those investors had stayed with Tesla, free power, it probably would have already happened. Cell phones would have been a thing in the 20s, dude. Yeah, no, exactly. Like cell phones, like all this stuff. Like, it's interesting with Tesla, and this is this is why Tesla is called that as a company. Like, it's like Elon Musk is not dumb, and this is like if you understand technology, I mean, this is God. Like almost all of what we view as modern technology starts with Tesla, and if you're not familiar with him, I mean, that's kind of why we're watching this thing. I I really like this guy thing and this was called tesla explained in 60 minutes i'll share the link when we're done but the thing i liked about this was this guy covers a lot of ground in 16 minutes like it's crazy here we'll get back in that's a pretty accurate tesla, i mean that's now really in his good. 50s in financial. right right it like and it went like again we got like two more minutes and it's kind of gone over the broad strokes of everything like you and i can talk forever on the projects but all right here get back ruin tesla struggled on for over a decade trying to complete his plans in vain. He then had a nervous breakdown, and his debt reached so high, he lost Wardenclyffe to foreclosure in 1915. The land soon passed to another owner, who destroyed the tower to make space for real estate. Tesla was now bankrupt, and his mental health started to significantly decline. He began living in a string of hotels, and started caring for pigeons, taking time every day to feed and care for them. In his late 70s, he ended up at the New Yorker Hotel, where he would stay for the rest of his life. This was largely thanks to the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company, who saw the dire conditions he was in and decided to pay his rent as a way to thank him for saving them all those years ago. Tesla went on to live until the age of 86, dying in his hotel room on the 7th of January, 1943. Nikola Tesla was a man ahead of his time. His advancements in electricity were radical, helping to usher in the modern age, with his influence seen in anything from x-rays to remote control. His world wireless system had the potential to advance technology by nearly a century, while also <laughs> providing free energy to the globe. Jeff Rogers just wrote, Unlike so Tesla many is of the Marilyn era, Monroe of technology. Tesla did not work for they financial gain, death and then used instead his working to, to advance humanity. Profit. Perhaps it is not surprising. That's pretty man accurate. So far ahead of his time has only found his place in the 21st century, an age shaped by his technological brilliance. Alright, so that's that's that. We'll pop that link over in the show chat. One second. There we go. Boom. So yeah, I mean that's. That's Tesla in a nutshell, right? There we go. All right, there. Boom. Hi. So, how is Tesla related to Freddie Mercury? They have to be based on that. Look at that stash. Yeah, maybe. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, Tesla is important, but the important part with the Tesla story is to remember what, Tover? What's the lesson from Tesla's life? The lesson is, is that if you get too close to the third rail that is free energy, um, you're always going to end up like Tesla. Right. And the thing about it that's so crazy is that that has played over itself over and over again. At least a half a dozen times since Tesla's death. Right. And the one that was really interesting, and I was not even aware of this guy. Like, I knew. So here's. Here's the thing I'll tell you going in, Tovar. So, because because now we're going to talk about what we are here to talk about, which is uh, T. Henry Murray, right? Who's my personal hero? Right, Thomas no, no, Henry and Murray. I, and I will say I, this: so, like, I don't, I never really knew much about him, right? Like, I knew what the Moray valve was, right, and I knew who he was, but I didn't realize all the stuff that was going on. And all the ways that it happens, i.e. with this third rail. So what I have a question for you before we get started with this, like, how close do you think Elon Musk is to touching that third rail in which he dies? Or is he rich enough to where it's not going to matter? No, I think he understands where it is. And as a businessman and someone who knows how to market product, is probably going to do the thing that Tesla and Murray and Myers couldn't do. Um, which is find out a way to make the oil man profit off of it. I think that that may be the case, but you know what else he did now that I like, I'm thinking about this from Elon Musk's standpoint, right? Cause that guy seems to be at least 18 steps ahead of everybody, right? Correct. You know how he was doing like those underground highways in LA, which he's still doing the boring machine. Yeah. The boring machine. Um, if you were going to develop Tesla or Murray like free energy, right? Like you're you're this philanthropist, you're super smart. Wouldn't you do all your primary research underground? Well, yeah, why wouldn't you build it underground so when you turn it on, like, oh, why does everyone all of a sudden have free power and no one knows how to turn it off? Right. And more importantly, nobody can get at you because there's only one entrance. Like like the way that you don't get killed by the third rail is to have a fortress, right? Yeah, with a bunch of nanobots inside to just freaking buzz, buzz right. you out of existence. Right, because I guess because I guess bullet drones are a thing. So we're gonna watch two things on Murray, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna pick Tovar's mind about it because this is this is actually fascinating. And uh, also, fuck you for this rabbit hole, Tovar. Dude, I I did this like a decade ago. I, I I've I've been a huge free energy guy like most of my life. And and Thomas what got Murray you what got literally... you into free energy? What was like your intro to it? Uh, Tesla, honestly, I've always like I I read a bunch of his books when I was a kid. Um, like uh, the idea that like he was able to just make a car with a little black box that he used to just be able to plug in and be able to drive it anywhere. Um like he was so far ahead of his time and the government did so much to try and quash it. I wondered how much more of what he used to talk about was really true. And then I stumbled onto Thomas. And when I realized that Thomas had taken it a step further and that a couple other people besides him had all seen the same fate, I realized what was really going on and it fucking scared me. Yeah, and so for me, it's interesting because I grew up big on Tesla, right? Tesla was interesting to me. I watched a documentary very early on, and I was like, oh, I'm into Tesla, right? And then the Moray valve was just something that I knew existed and, like, I had looked into, but I never really understood this guy, right? And I He's the one they try and bury the most. No, because no, I don't know. It's one... crazy to me because yeah. I had a point, like I said, when I was – man, it had to be, like, 18, like – I found out a lot about Tesla and then I started looking around. Right. And I found this dude and I found the other dude and then Bob Lazar. Right. Like those, those things I knew. Okay. But the only thing I knew about Murray was this Murray valve and everything you can like look into on it is basically the same thing where it's them just trying to discredit it. They basically Tesla would him, but because he wasn't a bigger name and he was closer to that third rail, it stayed gone. So right. here, we're going to start here. We'll come back. We'll talk some more Murray because I want to pick your brain about this. This shit's crazy. The Sea of Energy in Which the Earth Floats was a revolutionary book written by T. Henry Moray, an electrical engineer and Tesla enthusiast 
who in the early 20s began working on a device he claimed intercepted radiant energy from outer space. His solid state detector, the Moray valve, was designed with a complex series of semiconductors, high voltage capacitors and transformers hooked up to an antenna and a ground wire. By stimulating the existing oscillations of space energy, his radiant energy device ran for days, putting out 50 kilowatts of electricity. His public demonstrations attracted newspaper coverage and scientists from Bell Laboratories and the Department of Agriculture's Rural Electrification Administration. Although no one could find evidence of fraud, neither could anyone explain how the radiant energy device worked. During the 30s, developed semiconductors and transistors that were far ahead of their time. Unfortunately, as all too many inventors have suffered, when he refused to sell out to powerful interests, Moray and his family were threatened, shot at, and the laboratory ransacked. Ignored by the U.S. Patent Office, Moray quietly stopped public disclosure of the device after it was destroyed by his assistant, Felix Frazier, a communist sympathizer who was frustrated when Moray declined his repeated offers to take that technology to Russia. Today, Moray's sons, John and Richard, continue to pursue their father's dream. Okay, so that is what I could find out for whoops, that. Hold on. A portion of this video. Like, so I was doing some digging, and I found this, which is interesting because, like, Ooh. what? So, like, there's a... There's an interesting... So, this is kind of funny, Tovar, right? Go ahead. So, there's a site on YouTube called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. And oh, it's yeah. it's basically, like, heavy-leaning, like, conspiracy theory stuff. Yeah, but, stuff that's fun to, like, entertain. But what's interesting is they were the only place I could find anything on Mareg. All the other yeah. stuff oh, yeah. is gone. Yeah. Well, and in 10 years ago, there was more though, of it. But, so what's interesting is, uh, what was it, Saturday? Whenever you text me that stuff, I started watching some of them, right? Mm -hmm. And then I tripped down this hole, and then I watched this, and I started fact-checking it. And you could individually fact-check everything in this video, and it checked out, right? Yes. But it's, like, still leaning in the conspiracy theory thing, but it's the only one I it could really find. It really happened outside of that one minute so that one minute clip i just played right yeah that clip i was able to find in a few places right like yes. that clip was around okay but nothing else yeah it's like they want to completely erase it from time because this guy really did figure it out right that's the thing that's so fucked up with it you know yeah in the 1920s and like for people who are just like um uh, like watching along like this guy figured out how to, how to power everyone's house with just a lightning rod and some capacitor he, like 50 kilowatts is a lot of power is it yeah when you think about um 50 kilowatts is like is what fifty thousand volts something like that i think sure um and what is the average house pull like what's the average house drop room for uh watts uh i mean i fucking dude i I don't know if you know this or not, but I did not get into Twitch because I thought there would be math. I'm Googling it right now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me see here. So um, the average home consumes about 10,000 kilowatts a year, I think. Is that right? I, I don't know. I, like, like I said, I literally have no idea. Yeah. So it's literally producing um, like five times more than what the average house would need. Is what that device is making. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Yeah, and then here we are. Here we are still paying electricity bill bills. Weird, right? Yeah. Okay, but so here's the... Uh, we're going to watch this. And that's the thing. So, But the, the thing I want to say is, so everywhere you look, like Elon Musk, Tesla, you can find tons of shit, right? But this dude, you can't find shit on. It's crazy. Or a valve. You 
can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. The observable universe is governed by certain immutable laws. In the grand scheme of human existence, our understanding of these laws is relatively recent. It wasn't until the 18th century that scientists began to chip away at the enigmatic world of thermodynamic systems, eventually arriving at the four widely accepted laws in use today. Every machine we use follows the constraints of these principles. While concepts like free or zero-point energy devices may sound neat in science fiction, they cannot exist in the real world. At least, that's the modern scientific consensus. But what if it's wrong? Here's where it gets crazy. For centuries, people have claimed to create free energy devices. You've probably heard of the rumors surrounding Nikola Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower, as well as the claims that he sought to tap into an ambient free energy field. But he wasn't the only person yeah, trying to bad. create See, new ways of mining box, energy. In the 1930s, an electrical engineer named Thomas Henry Murray claimed to have invented a radiant energy device, which he called the Murray valve. It was, essentially, a large antenna connected to a series of intricately arranged high-voltage capacitors, semiconductors, and transformers. According to Murray, this device could produce 50 kilowatts of power without a discernible external power source. Instead of receiving energy from a battery or a fossil fuel, the Moray valve was allegedly a solid-state device harnessing and oscillating energy coming from space. In his book, The Sea of Energy in Which the Earth Floats, Murray argued that he had documented evidence of his invention's efficacy. According to his book and to his supporters, Murray gave repeated demonstrations of the valve to engineers, congressmen, journalists, and more. He also allowed investigators to disassemble, examine, and rebuild his device. According to the story, no one was able to prove that it was fraudulent, but the U.S. government refused to grant Moray a patent because he used a cold cathode and failed to identify the source of this energy. The story gets stranger, as Moray later claimed that communist agents had infiltrated the Rural Electrification Agency and pushed him to send his discoveries to Russia. Eventually, Moray's original prototype was destroyed, apparently because he refused to sell the plans for his device. His children continued his work, which is still not accepted by the scientific community at large. Murray did not believe his valve was a perpetual motion machine, just a new way of tapping previously unexploited energy. To the skeptics, Moray could not get a patent because his machine simply didn't work. To others, however, the patent office was working on something else, suppressing the stuff they don't want you to know. What's the difference between a country's military forces and its local police? The answer may surprise you. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Hi. So, Henry Murray. Well, and there you have it. No free energy for the masses. So, like, it's fucking crazy, though, right? And so the idea, guys, that was 100 years ago. This guy figured this Henry out 100 Spell years ago. Back. Tesla figured this out like 120 years ago. Yeah, and here, before we start talking, I want to, here's a guy that did a, like, voiceover on the, like, the schematics of it for people that want to see more of the schematical side. Today we continue with radiant energy and this patent is called uh, Thomas Henry Moray Radiant Energy Collector. Basically it collects the cosmic energy or cosmic waves and extracts it through this device. It is just connected to a ground and we are able to get 50 kilowatt output. Yeah, So it's very strange. So, so this, um, this works the same or the similar way like we would pick up the radio waves from the, our radio stations. Of course if we construct a device we can uh, pick up the radio waves with the coil and light up some diode and we can have only small energy and that's the problem and if we have uh, this cosmic energy collector like uh, thomas henry Moray suggested we could able to pick kilowatts of power 
absolutely for free. And the secret, uh, secret is in this device. Yeah, it consists of some kind of uh, complex semiconductors and diodes and uh, oscillators, which are able to pick up those cosmic waves and transmit it uh, to the output. Yeah, and this device only have to be connected to the ground. Yeah, and then we can connect ourselves to the output. So let me show. There are some images. So basically, the most important component of this uh, system is the Mori valve. Yeah. So if I open the image, this should represent some kind of Mori valve, which uh, its components and also there are some other pictures which present le electron plate x-ray tube reflector and, and these things also mm, there is a third images which is the basically very uh, simple circuit which represents this uh, moray device and the last thing is this moray valve and some materials which are um, possibly be, have been used in this Mori valve. Yeah? So nobody knows for sure because the, no real patent images were ever exposed because they were destroyed. Yeah? His patent so, papers were destroyed. So that's it. That, that's the cosmic energy collector. Can it work? Yeah. Probably, yeah. The universe uh, has some cosmic waves and if we are able to pick them up, it will be great. Yeah, Because then we will have enormous amount of free energy. Okay. So interesting like i said that's all you can really find on the internet of this guy like there's like everything else goes into like like r like there's like some old guy that does a lecture on it and then some other stuff it, it's just a bunch of craziness right and the deeper you get into that stuff the crazier it gets with him So I, um, when I originally into it, I had read that he was using um, an iridium glow-in-the-dark paint that they were using um, for like watches and stuff at the time, sure. Um, sure. in his capacitors, um, and then that was probably one of the materials that was exciting these things in order to actually draw electricity from the air. So he was saying it collected energy from the air, but he was putting radioactive tape in there. No, it, it was paint that he was actually coating the surface of the capacitor, the inside of the surface of the capacitor with. Okay, is, is what it was. Um, the paint is no longer available. It hasn't been since, like the fifties or the sixties. Once they figured out how bad, like how dangerous the paint was. Yeah, use my VPN for what, Rusty? <clears throat> for free energy? I don't think it works that way. But so, like, what? Why is the rail of third energy what it is? It's fucking crazy. Um, because of the oil industry and uh, the power industry, you know, General Electric and Exxon Mobil aren't going to really want to participate in a system where nobody's giving them money anymore. Right. Because why the fuck would they? I mean, you got to understand, like, these are these are like some of the biggest companies, um, not only today, but that have ever existed in time. Like these companies have a bigger GDP th than 98% of the countries ever existed before us. And these are just corporations. Sure. But so, okay. So with like, how are they able to keep doing that shit? Like, cause they, they basically Tesla and Murray, right? Like that's what happened. Well, I mean, back I mean like, then they were there was denying no him a fucking patent for his work. Right. Well, and that's why I think one of the reasons why Tesla is more successful today is because like, the media can't steamroll him as long as the power of the internet is around. Sure. And he's a better salesman. You know, he's just a much better salesman than, uh, than Thomas Murray or, you know, or Nikola Tesla was. Sure. Well, and he also is making a lot more smart decisions. Most engineers are not salesmen, man. You gotta understand like the people like Thomas Murray and the people, uh, like Tom, like uh, Tesla, they're introverts. They're people that spend uh, ninety percent of their time away from other people, around other people that at least understand what they do. Right? Sure. They work on stuff their entire lives to try and better humanity. They have they have an understanding that nobody else has, and because of which, you know, they they become kind of social outcasts. They become social pariahs. So they they get these really uh, uh, beautiful inventions that can change humanity, but they have to go through the lens of a society that they don't really understand. 
Right, but then, like, yeah, I mean, I guess. The real, like, so if it's out there, if free energy's out there and we can find it on the internet, how is it staying buried? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Um, there, um, I can give you a couple examples of some stuff that's come out recently and what happened. Um, there was a video that surfaced about 10 years ago of a company that made a, uh, a water cavitator, which is just a drum inside of another that had dr- uh, holes drilled at a certain angle that when you fired this thing up with an electrical motor, um, after 10 minutes, it would start over uniting, which means that it would actually start putting power back into the motor that was spinning it. And so the motor became an alternator or a generator instead of a motor. <clears throat> and um, what happened to that company is that now they make what's called uh, alcohol and wine cavitator. Uh, they do not uh, sell their equipment for any kind of power generation or any kind of water heating. Uh, they were paid by the federal government to do contracts that didn't involve anything to do with power generation. So what will happen Um, is that say like you and I go in our garage today and we sit down and we go, holy shit, we figured it out. We fucking did it, right? Um, Let's go post a video or something um, that shows uh, what we've done, right? We post this video, we go, look at what we've done. We've made a water cavitator that uh, over unities after 10 minutes and starts producing 15% more power than it takes to run. And then, uh, you know, these guys come come and quietly visit you. They say, hey, man, that's really cool, um, but here's what we want you to do with it, and here's what we're going to pay you to do to do that. Also, if you don't do what we want to do, uh, you're just going to have a heart attack. These videos will slowly disappear after 20 years, and in 30 years, no one's going to really know your name. Right, but like how – again, I just don't understand how they just bury it like that because like it's still there. With money, with well, yeah, lots and lots but, of like, money. You would think that like – Well, yeah, look at the I mean, I guess. I can send you I can send you links to those water cavitators and like you could not find one of those things for sale that would be used in a situation where it could actually make power. The, the company now and I can show you a link to the company if they're still in business makes alcohol cavitators w- which is just like um um spinning alcohol and like uh different liquors to you know for whatever processes you need. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's just, it's just money. You know influence, I need another like, soda and I got to piss. You entertain these guys. That, that's fucking depressing, man. I hate this. No, it really is. It really is. Cause but the hey, thing hey is, on the bright side, there's tiny little mini bullet drones now. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that most of us, if you were approached by someone who says that's a really good invention, I'll give you this much money. If you don't bring it out to the, you know, are yeah, you really everybody, everybody's taking it? that paycheck. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But exactly. like, how are and the like, people that aren't are going to be Stan Meyer? But here's but here's my argument to that, or my counter thought, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's true. That's what they're doing. I totally accept that. Okay, yeah. but why are none of those people using even a fraction of that money to invent something else as well? Because well, like you look at like now, Tesla, you now look you at like the Tesla. Now well, you that's what I'm saying. You Tesla. look at like Tesla. You look at Moray. You look at Elon Musk. They're never isolated inventors. I right. mean, I guess maybe well, they're one a, one a generation. That could be. And if you look at Tesla, yeah, and that's exactly right. If you look at Tesla, the stuff that he's marketing isn't anywhere near, um, you know, the lightning rod, rod that makes power for free or Wardenclyffe. Like, he's making batteries, batteries which he knows he can sell to General Electric and the fucking energy. Kind company. of, though, because, like, he's also working on giving the world free internet. I mean, that's something he's been doing actively. Yeah, for sure. But, like, the, the cable companies, like NBC and Comcast, aren't as powerful exxon and ge yet you know what i'm saying you just think think they're still powerful enough to like man so what if what if this motherfucker is also putting in free energy in these satellites it's like here you go buddy which it could be we don't know right yeah and they're private property so they can't like it's fucking crazy i love i love that there's a billionaire alive that is smarter than almost everybody and he likes to tinker with physics. I love that. I think that's the biggest difference. I think if Tesla would have been born a billionaire, I think if Moray would have been a born a billionaire, we'd be seeing that back then. It's just that they didn't have enough money and influence to try and avoid, you know, all of the, the pitfalls right. of what happens when you Whereas grab Elon Musk has enough money, he can just sign away the tape. He doesn't need to be bought out, you know, and, and they can't really muscle him to protect himself. So. All right, talk Tesla. I'm going to piss. I'll be right back.
or Elon Musk or Moray. So just talk or Moray. I mean, we haven't. Really I'll have my to... phone on. I'll have my phone on. I'll be monitoring you. I don't trust you alone. But... <laughs> we haven't. We haven't gotten to the other guy yet, which I'm excited because he's also one of my favorites. But Tom Thomas Moray is a guy that I've I've really uh, kind of relied on for the last decade. Whenever I get into one of those like tinfoil hat tinfoil hat arguments about how much I love free energy, and people are always just like, "Yeah, but which twenty it'd be invented yet?" I always Thomas Moray out of my back pocket. Because he is the one guy that if someone goes and researches, you can't really refute him or make him look like he's just some crazy crackpot. Because he was one of like the most ingenious electronic inventors of his day and of his era. And uh, his story is just so crazy and so batshit of like what they went through to try and get that machine out of the guise of history, you know. And uh, Tesla before him, you know, Tesla made a lot of like really crazy inventions. And another thing that always happens um, when these guys die, um, that I'm sure we'll talk about when Corey gets back, is that um, when they die, right, um, the U.S. government will always come in and confiscate the entirety of their work um, and then keep it for God knows how long. I mean, uh, our U.S. government has been sitting on uh, Nikola Tesla's stuff for 100 years now, at least, a little over probably. And God knows what the hell they've been creating with it, you know, because we don't know. They're just sitting there with a shitload of time and all of these geniuses fucking inventions and they get to try and do whatever the fuck they want with it and don't have to tell anybody, you know? And, uh, I don't know, like, the new Tesla, I, uh, I kind of had, like, conflicted emotions about, like, I really kind of see the benefits of, of electric cars that can go for forever, but there's also technologies that are emerging that are a little bit better than battery technologies like i kind of lean towards the future of cars being hydrogen powered <clears throat> and who knows there might be hydrogen there's like three or four different battery designs out there right now they're going to change the entirety of not just the automotive right. field but how we power our, oh dude. Power everything. so you are so right about them busting in and taking your everything. So Just taking your everything. That's why I'm saying with it. Elon Musk, it's interesting because he also has the ability to make it so that they can't. Yes, exactly. Like, Because here's what he's going to do, I bet, right? When yeah. he dies, his shit's just going to be broadcast over the new internet. Or it's going to be incorporated in, into a business in, in which the federal government can't really just go in and get right. their records. Right. You know? But yeah, it's <clears throat> absolutely not. So like, yeah. And the thing with, all right, hold on. But yeah, I mean, people have been coming up with radiant energy or free energy or point energy now. I mean, all the way up until like the last couple of years, there's still people tinkering with it in their garage. Hell, if I had a million dollars in the bank, that's all I would do with my day is I would go out to my shop and I would just play around with something until I accidentally stumbled upon free power. And I don't think I'd even advertise it. I think that I would just enjoy the benefits of what I had figured out and, uh, you know, just quietly pull myself off the grid. And I'm sure there's been people that have done that. Of course. How could there not be? Like, it's fucking weird. So. Hold on. Yeah, it's 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 interesting to think people about like, where they're uh, going people... and this new this new. <clears throat> AI that they're making master molds with, which I don't condone. That's going to be a really rough, weird time for everybody involved because that shit gets fucking is, yeah. crazy. Well, and the model, the, the models that are going to come out with the changes that are going to be exponentially better. Like, you know, imagine like now every year a car gets significantly a little bit better. Right now, imagine if all of those changes that were happening in a year's time to a car were now happening in months. Like, you go to your friend, and you're like, oh, I got the Tesla Model S. You're like, oh, what month do you have? I got November. And you're like, fuck, man, you should have waited for February's. February's was the one to have. That one's the one that flies. Yeah, it's fucking... It's just crazy, like, how far everything is going and how far that they can. All right, we're going we're gonna to rotate over into yours because this, this one's all you, baby. I uh, I didn't know about this guy at all. So this is kind of cool for me because, again, like even though – so I didn't know as much about Moray as I probably should have given what a tinfoil hat I can be. 
about that. Uh, there we go. There we go. Baby. Yeah. What'd you know about Stan Myers? I mean, I had heard about the buggy, right? Yeah. Like, but I didn't even know his name. And I hadn't even really seen video of it until you showed me this stuff. So I kind of always thought it was kind of a myth. But so, no, it's uh, real. yeah, no, no, it's, it's clearly fucking real. Right. Uh, so yeah, here we go. This is fucking absolute banana sandwich. This is something I got. I got a couple videos ready on this one. And this is something we will just call fucking uh, Myers. The top our news here at six o'clock. An age old this dream volume is becoming terrible, a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And it's so here's another funny, weird thing about that, right? Is the Sid Meier thing, or Sid Meier, this uh, Stan Meyer thing, the only clip I could find was this fucking video. Like, like, this is crazy that this... And, and it's like the more age stuff all over again. It's crazy that this is the only thing you can find because... It made how hard news and you can barely but find it's, it. But it's one channel mono. It crackles. It's like impossible to watch. It's blurry. It's fucking nuts. But this is what everyone who lived in that area... Right, but there should be more than just this about it. Absolutely. That's weird. There's more on his death than there is on this. That's weird to me. The top our news here at six o'clock, an age old dream becoming a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. Water has always been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. He has developed what's called a water fuel cell. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. And I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, they use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. Myers started working on this project four years ago. He's not a scientist. He isn't even a chemist. In fact, he never graduated from college. Myers was determined, he says, to design something to protect this country from oil embargoes. <laughs> and we have calculated that if we take the dune buggy from Los Angeles to New York. All right. Tovar, where are you? I'm here. Okay. So we're going to don't say anything yet. We're not going to talk about it yet. But if you're following along at home, right, we now have three check marks in the guy's going to get killed bingo card. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. shitting on education. Right. They didn't like yep. that back then. OK. Not uh, at all. Not free energy, which we know is a big no, 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 no. And talks with the Pentagon. And, and fuck the government talks with the Pentagon. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna ruin what's gonna happen here but i think we all see it coming also <laughs> also i've got failed breaks as my free spot come on bingo come on bingo we would roughly use 22 gallons of water the Pentagon flew a Lieutenant Colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program and to run army tanks. Myers is currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance and you won't have to replace it. It'll be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The day it happens will be one the fuel industry hates, but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. I'm Ralph Robinson. As you can see, many people. Yeah, we have... talked about how the volume sucks on this one, producer Mike. It's not zero. It's very soft. You're going to have to turn it up. You're the only person. I already explained it. Get fucked. Already been received, and many more are forthcoming. To date, over 42 patents have been applied for. Okay, so. Why isn't everyone driving a water-powered car right now? I mean, that's a good question. Also, here's another thing on what happened to that dude. You ready? Here's here's where it gets creepy, right? Like, because it wasn't creepy before. I mean, we all knew he was going to fill out that bingo card, but here comes this. E? Right here. 
right now we have the entrenched energy monopolies and cartels. You know, we have OPEC and we have the seven sister oil companies that control all the oil and energy. But what people have to understand is that the people who run the energy business in this world, which is the biggest business on the planet, turning over four to five trillion dollars a year, it's bigger than guns and drugs, it's bigger than defense, they control the newspapers, they control the governments. But these companies are so big that they regulate the government, which regulates them. It's not free. Nothing is free. Uh, but uh, cheap and efficient energy exchange is a viable concept. Now, I say that everything in this universe is free energy. It's been dreamed of for hundreds of years that somewhere, someplace, as Tesla said, man will hook his machinery to the very wheel work which drives the universe itself the history of and science it's amazing. So like, is this, the this thing obviously like they're going to get into like more about stanley but the thing that's interesting is the further you go into all of these like free energy holes it always comes back to tesla always history of the suppression of great inventions he was the grandfather uh, of so much a few classic stories nikola tesla no diggity just wrote myers patents have expired his inventions are now in the public domain, available for all of us to use without restriction or royalty payment. That is false. The FBI came in and confiscated most of it. Like, Boom. figuring out what yeah. he actually did is really hard. JJ's blood alcohol content says, the answer is easy. There is no money in solving problems. Medical, big farm, technology. Nikola yeah, Tesla is regarded as the founding father of free energy. His astounding developments in the generation of alternating electrical current are still being used today. His most notorious project involved the transmission of wireless electricity into the atmosphere, which allowed for unlimited power to be freely accessed by everyone. Which, okay, I will say this, and somebody had mentioned it earlier, but like, we also, we got a, in fair disclosure with Tesla, there was, ah, uh, thanks for the subs, glitched one, I appreciate it. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Get that sub badge. Yeah, see, I'm doing it. Ah. Uh, there were a bunch of scientists at the time that were saying that what Tesla was doing might have fucked with one of the magnetic poles and could have, like, destroyed the ozone. So Bullshit. The, the, the poles are wandering faster than they were back then in the ozone. No, no, no. I know. But, like, if you pulled it more, you could fuck it up. Like, I'm telling you. Like, I'm not saying I believe it or whatever, but I'm saying there was a coalition of scientists oh, absolutely. that were saying that. But there's a coalition and, of scientists that stand against everything. That's how right, science but works. But they're still saying that, like, if we go off another whatever degrees, it's going to fuck with blah, blah, blah. But, like... Which so, is going to. It's doing right, that right now. The whole point is that... Oh, hell yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, diggity. Thank you. Kurt Munger's in here. Hibben. Uh, yeah, so it's just interesting. Like I said, no matter how far you go down these free energy holes... It always comes down to Tesla. It's fucking nuts. When his financial backer, J.P. Morgan, realized that this power system could not be metered, all funding was immediately withdrawn. Tesla's electrical broadcast towers were dis- And that is absolutely true. The moment that he couldn't do it, gone. Oh, hey, we got a hype train. A clean energy hype train. Mantled, and through Morgan's many close connections with the media and government, Tesla's career was destroyed. In 1977, Bruce DePalma unveiled the first prototype of the N machine, an electrical generator which uses rotating magnets to generate up to five times more power than it takes to drive it. I know about the fact that the Japanese government and the Indian government have ongoing projects to produce N machines for domestic power. Uh, my partner is Paramahamsa Tiwari, who is the director of the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, which operates all the nuclear plants in India. In late 70s, I learned from Bruce de Palma that he had carried out certain crucial experiments by rotating electromagnets. Tiwari tested a prototype based on de Palma's end machine under laboratory conditions. The results were deemed too impressive, causing disbelief and suspicion among conservative government officials and the power consortiums that backed the project. Tuari was forced to abandon the project completely. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. 
U.S. inventor Stan Myers released his water-powered car engine in 1988. The Pentagon flew on the Pentagon Colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using they have it better in the Star Wars defense clip, program and to run army things. They got a better Myers soundboard. Found it virtually impossible to that secure financial backing after certain Pentagon officials paid him a visit. A number of similar inventions were developed and tested all around the world. My best friend was killed over this man. There's a, a chap here, about 10 minutes away from here, driving. He has been running his car on water since 1986, with the government's permission, provided that he keeps his mouth shut. And with regular intervals, using his own words, they keep warning him to keep his mouth shut. One of our um, colleagues who have been running car on the water for the 10 year period now, he's, he reckons that it's 26 times more powerful than petrol. a better mousetrap you know the world may be to pass to your door if you in invent a free energy machine there'll be a path be to your door but you don't want those people there one of the pivotal people that uh, i encountered early in my uh, career was edgar mitchell the astronaut Lift off. Lift off. edgar j mitchell an apollo mission astronaut founded the neuretics institute in southern california the Institute's charter was supposedly to develop alternative left, energy systems by attracting inventors from all over the country. Mitchell became extremely interested in De Palma's end machine. He made De Palma a paltry offer to buy out the invention which De Palma naturally refused. He said to me that uh, if I ever tried anything on my own in California, I would get my head blown off. So I was scared to death. The CIA operates through various very innocent looking fronts to find out what people are thinking and and what they're inventing now what's more innocent than a denying institute founded on transcendental prim principles to help new age inventors bring free energy into the world and that situation still exists in the united states today where a person really understands what's going on just can't get their idea out because the alternative science and medical fields have been co-opted by the intelligence services and he converted this little engine to run on water. This is many, many years ago. And he used it for several years. And somehow the news got out, and one day he got visitors, and he was told to dump the engine or else. Three weeks later, the man was dead. And the coroner's finding was that he fell off the back of a train. He was drunk. Now it happened that he didn't drink. Even Dr. Townsend T. Brown, the uh, electrogravitic uh, research scientist, uh, has on his 16 millimeter film of his lab test which we've got here uh, he has guys with the black suits and black hats come into the place you can see where the legends come from i mean uh, these guys come in and they, they they look like you know bad bark to black man i mean it's just it's classic and these things do happen there is no progressive science in a world where every scientific uh, idea is evaluated for its military potential energy and control of energy equals power in the new world order that is emerging if you control the energy the way we get it's around the way we get electricity the way we have our tvs and video cameras and stuff. apparently the hype train went after free energy it's gone now if you do the control of the energy westinghouse then is you pissed. Have control of the people <laughs> all right so yeah that pretty good pretty good clip overall right Everyone who thinks that they're giving power to the masses is going to get moited or bought out. Yeah. Super murdered. Your choice. <laughs> uh, what if I don't want to choose those things? Then keep your fucking mouth shut. Uh, okay, Pa. No, it's just fucking crazy, right? Because it's like there are so many people that are trying to do this thing and they haven't killed him. So here's the real question. Why is Bob Lazar still alive? Like how? Uh, that dude like blew the whistle on aliens and was doing free power in his spare time. Yeah, but he's also, uh, I don't know. I have no idea how Like, he's Like still I'm alive. just telling you. So first off, like 
my my card on the bingo card would have died with Bob Lazar because again, if anything in me understood anything, I I would think. Maybe because he blew the whistle on UFOs, they figured if they killed him, like it would give his his story more traction, and that's why I don't I have no idea. But after you see this next video, everyone's gonna wonder that. Yeah. Mr. Approachable says, when going down the free energy rabbit hole, did you look at biomass energy? We did not. Or I did not. No, I just kind of wanted to stick to it as it pertained to the like automotive uh, yeah. field. So, so here, let's like watch he, this one yeah. and we'll come right back. This is the Lazar one. So you read all over the internet about people and they run their car on water and hydrogen fuel cells and so on. You're running your car on hydrogen. You can't run a car on water. But you're using water. Right. You use water as the source material. You run electricity through it mm -hmm. and it breaks it down into hydrogen and oxygen and then you can burn the hydrogen. All right, so you found a way to store a lot more hydrogen in hydrate. The equivalent of a full tank of gas. You want to fill up your car. How much hydrate do you need? Well, I'll show you. No way. Yeah, that's the volume it takes to store enough hydrogen to propel this car close to 400 miles. Just about what it gets running on a full tank of gas. Wow. And it's a lot safer than gasoline. Really? Yeah, these tanks can be shot at with incendiary bullets or cut in half with a chainsaw. And you could throw a match on them. They just smolder like a cigarette. And you can't say that about a gas tank. Now, if you stored hydrogen and just compressed gas in a tank, it would certainly explode, yeah. catch on fire. Here, only the hydrogen that you need is released from the tank. When the tank's heated, it produces hydrogen, and the car burns it. So there's never much gaseous hydrogen in the system at any given time. Wow. So these are the these are the fuel lines. No, what are these? Those no, are these are the. This provides power to the heater in the tank, and also reads back the temperature of the tank. Why is that important? Well, when you apply heat to hydride, it releases hydrogen. So as oh. power is applied to here, it heats the hydride, right. and then the gas comes out, the big hoses on the end. Now you have four hoses. Do they all mix into one big hose or yeah. something? Because you can only get hydrogen out of hydride at a certain rate with a certain temperature. And a single tank, you can't get it out at the volume you need. So you really just split it into four smaller units, heat them separately, and it works just fine. Okay. Now behind me, Bob is getting ready to blow something up. Bob is blowing up water. Well, okay, he's not blowing up water because, as he said, to say you're powering your car on water is the same thing as saying if you're running your car on gasoline, you're powering your car on dinosaurs, and we know that's not the case. Um, this is what? This is a Hoffman apparatus. And it's used to? Produce hydrogen and oxygen from water. For fun, just because it's cool. Well, if you just have a use for hydrogen and oxygen or for demonstration purposes, it works just perfect. All you got to do is fill it with water. That's just regular water, right? Well, actually, water with a little citric acid, potassium hydroxide, anything like that. The more conductive you make the water, the faster hydrogen will come out. And each one of these sides is supposed to be hydrogen and oxygen? Right. One will be... Hydrogen will bubble up out of one, and oxygen will bubble up out of the other. Remember, water is H2O. Right. So when we break the bond of water apart, we'll get twice as much hydrogen gas as we do oxygen. Oh, so what happens to the water? It just goes away. Right. It gets converted so, into... So each one of these tubes, the water just goes down, but what's left is the gas? Right. And there'll be more on this side? Yes. And that's the hydrogen side? Exactly. And that's the negative. Oh, so it matters which way you hook these up. So you got to hook up positive to what is the positive is well, going to make the... positive will make the oxygen and oh. the negative will make oh, no way. the hydrogen. Okay. So we've just connected it there. Right. And just by turning it on, you can see bubbles start pouring up out of there. It's seven up. <laughs> kind of. So those bubbles are, well, they're not the same. So these are hydrogen bubbles and those are oxygen, oxygen bubbles. bubbles. Right. 
and there's this is wider. There's more of them. Right. I'll, you can see it's really. Why is there more? Oh, H two. Two. Oh, oh right. right. There's twice as much. Hey, that actually makes sense. So I'll close it off so it saves. Right. Seals the gas in, and right. then you'll see it'll start filling up. Oh, we could. We don't have to go away overnight. If this will do it while we're watching. Yeah, it'll be relatively quick. And what we'll do mm -hmm. is take a little sample of the hydrogen gas mm -hmm. and light it. Right. And you can see. That what just, are I mean? What are these? You just have electrical current going to a, a piece a of piece foil. Of, well, it's a piece of platinum foil, and the reason you need platinum in there is because that's it's very corrosive to a metal for electrolysis to occur. I mean, it's really ripping mm -hmm. the atoms of the metal apart, but mm -hmm. Platinum is highly resistant to corrosion. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a slow method. Right. And, you know, it, it consumes a fair amount of electricity. Now, mm -hmm. if the electricity is being produced from solar panels or a mm -hmm. wind generator, it doesn't cost you anything, so who cares? But still, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours to refill mm -hmm. a vehicle. You want something that can produce hydrogen at a fairly quick rate. So, let's go ahead and extract some of this. Okay. Look at that. Wow. So there's power of hydrogen. You see, just from water, something exploded. So this is the same thing that was inside the lab. Yeah, that was a small tabletop model. This is a large industrial version, essentially, uh, which connects right to the water main. Right. And produces a much higher volume. The water of main. You're the water garden line. hose. Right. Yeah, garden hose. You can plumb it in like you connect your, you know, dishwasher or just connect it to a garden hose. Right. And um, it's powered by uh, either a solar array, solar panels, mm -hmm. which convert sun into electricity, mm -hmm. or uh, a wind turbine takes the wind, converts it to electricity, or any other way. But the idea is just to use complete green energy. Ideally, I like to run this one on solar. New Mexico gets a lot of sunlight, so mm -hmm. that's really all there is to it. You connect it to a water line, plug it into your solar panel, and open the water line. It right. starts producing hydrogen, and when it has a sufficient quantity uh -huh. in there, let the hydrogen out, and you just leave it plugged into your car overnight. Now, this is the same as those other two tubes, right? Right. Hydrogen and oxygen, or right. whichever one is. And the oxygen we have no use for, so we just vent off into the air. And the hydrogen... It's very nice of you. I'm sure the Earth would be proud. Well, it could use all the <laughs> oxygen it can get. So right. the uh, hydrogen right. using uh, the water pressure is compressed right. into the hydride tanks. The water pressure, like a syringe, it pushes it right into the tank. Exactly. Well, there's the standard gasoline fill, but also there's a hydrogen in it, which you just click on, leave it on overnight. And as the generator makes hydrogen, it compresses it in there at a nice slow rate. And the tanks become full over a period of about eight hours or so. There are little points here and there that do have to be addressed. I mean, when it comes right down to it, you don't want fuel tanks inside the vehicle. This is a prototype, so ideally, eventually, you'd want the tanks outside, just like a fuel tank is. The second thing is you're dealing with an unusual gas. Hydrogen not only is lighter than air, but also it burns with an invisible flame and is completely odorless, which is not a good thing. Yeah. Now, propane is odorless, too. They add a, uh, you know, that pretty mm -hmm. strong scent to it. Um, and you can't really do that with hydrogen because if you add any kind of chemical to it, the hydride has a problem storing it. It can poison the hydride and lose its ability to hold hydrogen. So that's something that needs to be addressed. If you have a hydrogen leak and somehow the gas is getting in the car, you'd never know. Power, baby. And the, it could accumulate in the car. Scooter. You go to light a cigarette, there could be an explosion in a case oh, like that. Oh, so um, you need things like uh, right. a hydrogen gas detector, so it'll let you know if there is a hydrogen leak. But I mean, it's it's still an extremely safe system. Why can't everybody do this? I mean, gas is you know, going on five dollars a gallon. Right. It's oh. terrible. The whole country's falling apart. We're you know killing people all over the world for oil. And and this, you're driving a car on this, right. and you can do it. 
and you can convert any other car. Yeah, unless I'm sure there are cars that have some technical right. problems, but yeah, essentially well, any car can be converted. The whole problem to it is the material in the hydride, the hydride itself, right. one of the main components of it is classified as a weapon material and it can only be used in thermonuclear weapons. And because, even though it's not a dangerous right. material, explosive, or anything by itself, right. just because it's used within those nuclear weapons right. that are obviously secret and the components thereof, but um, because it's used in those, it can't be used for any other civilian purposes. So, you can't even purchase the material. No. Which is why we had to make it. You made it? Yeah, we made it. But and isn't isn't that don't you need big particle accelerators and yeah, things? Yeah, so that was the the one loophole. You can make the material, you can't buy it. So where's the particle? You have a particle accelerator. Yeah, so all you have to do is build a particle accelerator, and you can make all the hydride you need. <laughs> God damn it, I love bottles. The biggest thing that stands in the way right now is just getting that material inside the tank. He's that he's the best hydride so material, right? And yeah, the and the like, reason you can't yeah, is because. A, it's a weapon. accelerator right over there. Yeah. Give me all the hydrate you need. I want that as a sound drop. We're going to... I need that as a sound drop. We're going back. The way he just says that... Yep. Yeah, get you all the hydrate you need. All you have to do is build a particle accelerator and you can make all the hydrate you need. <laughs> oh, that's happening. The biggest thing that stands in the way right now is just getting that material inside the tank. That hydride material. Right. And the, and the reason you can't is because... It's the, a weapon material. But there's nothing dangerous about it. No, no, it's it just won't used blow up. a weapon. <laughs> right. I like well, how they're like, beryllium. there's nothing dangerous about it, but he's got a giant danger light on it. Like, nope, nothing dangerous at all. Ignore that giant light. Stand back 10 feet. Yeah, no, it's perfectly safe. Get you all the hydrate you need. But like, look at that. I'm sure not, that that's not the only thing that this he's centrifuging no, no, there. This is on his own ranch where he's doing this, and it just says danger. Pretty great. The partic You have a particle accelerator? Yep, yeah, so all you have to do is build a particle accelerator, and you can make all the hydride you need. <laughs> The biggest thing that stands in the way right now is just getting that material inside the tank, that hydride material. Right. And the, and the reason you can't is because... It's a weapon material. But there's nothing dangerous about it. No, no, it's it just won't used blow in up. a weapon. Right. Well, beryllium's used in it's a weapon. It's on a cinder... You know, right. Like, basically, this whole thing boils down to how you store the hydrogen. So we found a metal. We have a material that we can store the hydrogen in. We have a material we can safely store hydrogen in, and a sufficient quantity to replace the gas tank on a car. So we can provide enough hydrogen to drive a car as you normally would. Just pop over there. Get you all the hydrate you need. God damn it, Owen Pablasar. So Bob, Bob Lazar, like you got, like we're gonna do an episode on him just with the UFO shit. But I mean, like this guy's just fucking nuts. But here's how crazy this is, right? He's more famous as a UFO guy than a free energy guy. That's how much of a third rail this is. Right. Well, like what's crazy with him is kind of how. With Lazar, and I bet you're right. I bet there was something about it where it came into that, you know? It's just, it's so fucking weird, man. Like, like, why is he alive? Like, that dude is standing on the third rail. And so he's never tried to market it. That's why. He's never tried to market it. That's why. Yeah, that's fair. Well, he can, there's no way to market it because it's not a thing. Well, right. What are you going to do? Make hydrate? You can't sell it. Diggity says, quit talking about Tovar's third rail. I thought we were here talking about energy. My third rail is energy. <laughs> Riverfront discourse at 140. Yeah, I'll text him. I'm down. Yeah. 
You can use anything that combusts as a weapon. Here's here's the reality that nobody talks about when it comes to weapons. Everything's a weapon. It's all a weapon if you want and or need a weapon. This is a uh, this has been a very terrifying episode, Tovar. I don't mind telling you. Hey, glad I could shed light on all, on all this for everybody. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's pretty gross. I'm going to be uh Look at over that Moray stuff. Like, that Moray stuff is a crazy hole. And, like, I don't know. Again, what does Bob Lazar... Like, how is he it's alive? This dude fucking, like, has a car running on hydrogen water. Has mm-hmm. a video of him explaining it. Mm-hmm. And then also declassified UFOs. Yeah, on Joe Rogan. No, he declassified UFOs in the 80s. Well, years ago. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's like the one outlier, right? And I and I think it really has to do with the fact that he's never tried to market any kind of like fashionable right. solution. Yeah, they just kind of leave him alone and he leaves them alone. And that's like, yeah. that was the whole thing is he wasn't even declassifying shit because he wanted to. He just wanted to play with his toy again. Yeah, I think that's what it was. He's that's like, exactly what it was. Is he just wanted, he spent years working on these spacecrafts and now he wants to go back. And now the, the fucking FBI declassified that. We have off-world vehicles that is declassified by the CIA as of a week ago. Also, the dude made a multi-million dollar engineering company, even though the government said he didn't have an engineering degree. That's pretty amazing. you imagine doing something like that? Just making a multi-million dollar company with something that, like, everyone says you don't have a degree in? Right. But the Pentagon said that the UFO unit has off-world vehicles not made on Earth. Yeah, last week, just, like, that was just confirmed last week. They were doing that. Well, everybody was watching Barr watch Democrats scream, I reclaim my time. Yep. This is right. so this is something that will be a running theme of this show. And if you've been watching us since we started in March, it started then too. Whenever this something little... big happens, you have to yeah. look in the background because there's something bigger happening that they're not showing you or talking about. This is one of those things that 10 years ago when I talked about, everyone looked at me like I was just some kind of huge crackpot. And now with the revelations that are coming out, it's really hard to deny the fact that free energy and water-powered cars have actually been a thing now for, what, since the 80s? Well, and if these off-road vehicles run off not gasoline, which is way for years. it, statistically likely, we're talking Water. millennium. Yeah, we're talking about this world being a huge gas tank is all it is. It's just a petrol station. Right. And that's the worry is that when you get into like the off-world technology stuff, it's like, okay, so we know there's vehicles off-world, which means there could be a bunch of them. And if they're linked to pyramids like people have been alluding to, China has more py- pyramids than anybody. Well, and here's the – like they said, a vehicle. Like th- like we have vehicles, which means that right. everyone has vehicles. Right. And the real fear that they think – is that uh, Russia or China would be able to figure out some of this technology before we would. Yeah, it's just fucking crazy. And they, like, they had videos and stuff that they fucking um, declassified, like, a year ago or so. I mean, like... Yeah, because those Air Force pilots went on Rogan and we're talking about the videos. That right. Classified. And maybe we'll do maybe we'll do an episode about that. This like so this isn't necessarily. It's weird how it ties that. into. The, no, no, I was going to say it ties yeah. into everything. Like it's, it's yeah. amazing how at this point in time you can now go from fucking UFOs to Tesla. Logically, because we and did like that. Water no, no, because we did yeah, that yeah. here today. Like we started t- today with Tesla, the car company, which goes back to Tesla, which goes into free energy, which goes all the way back to UFOs because of Bob Lazar. And they like, it's just fucking crazy. Yeah. They're just Bob Lazar is the linchpin. Yeah. He's the linchpin to both of those subjects. That's Correct. Crazy. And cheeseburger pie nails. He said, they're just stopping on earth to get water to fill their tanks. Yes. There's That's a exactly highly, what they're doing. there's a highly likely chance that hydrogen is the fuel used by other places because it's way more common in the universe. And as Bob Lazar demonstrated, really easy to fucking store. Right. And if that's the case, not a lot of planets have water that we know about. So we on a gold mine. 
And, you know, that's the whole thing with, like, Space Force and all this other shit. It's like, if if they're telling us about this now, if they're organizing a space military now, that means there's tons of shit that they're not telling us. And it's not a coincidence that all this shit starts happening the moment we put shit that can reach beyond the Hubble telescope. You look out the window long enough, you'll see a car drive by. Turns out the cars were on our planet the whole time. But if you, like, the green energy is crazy because the people in power don't know how to profit off it, so it gets suppressed. Well, and my idea is, is the minute that they're like, oh, no, we're finally out of fossil fuel, but look what we created. Right, that's why, well, I remember, and I, like, do you remember, uh, this is how the octopi got here. Yeah, it could be, could be the octopuses, yeah, um, if you remember, though, send me your phone number, PM. What? What do you remember? I don't know. I forgot what I remember. That's the ironic part right now. What were you just saying? I was reading the comments and I got sidetracked. I don't know, man. I'm also under the influence. I'm not even of under the, the influence. <laughs> oh, you're not? No. Uh no, I mean, we were just talking about, like, uh, just how, like, they're going to wait until the fossil fuel... Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. No, no, I, like, if adventure. you remember, if you remember, this yeah. shit happens all the time. Yes. Like, for instance, like, tungsten. Do you remember when they told us that there was a shortage of tungsten and we would never have light bulbs again? Uh-huh. And about five years after that, LEDs came out. Which probably were around for a long right. fucking time. Of course they were. They were on military vehicles before that. They had LED diodes on the fucking moon landers, man. This is the same thing with uh, with uh, automotive technology. Like everyone wants to argue that safety belts save lives, or they they reduce the amount of people that, that died. And then I have to point out to them that uh, airbags have actually been around longer than safety belts, and it's not really about saving people. It's just about like profit. Money. Right. Because what else could it be? Always about profit margins. Always. It's fucking god. It just it's... so we'll get we'll get water powered cars when it's affordable for them, right? Or when they figure out how to regulate water, which they are working on. Yup, they sure are. Pretty sure Tesla made LEDs. Yeah, no, Tesla probably had them too. I mean, that's the thing is like this stuff, it's all out there and it's all available and it's been available and it's been out there. You, you just got to really go dig it. Right. And, and, and I mean like a lot of this stuff today was crazy. I mean like the Murray stuff. It's I'm so just... glad I got to share that with you and with everybody. Cause like I said, this has been a passion of mine for, for a decade. Like this is, if someone today goes, uh, Steven, here's a check for half a million dollars. Tomorrow, I'm building my free energy shed. Yeah. Think you need a license to capture rainwater? Well, you do. Some places you have to have the fucking thing oh, for absolutely. the collector. Yeah, they'll they'll take they'll come and put you in jail and take your life for rainwater. Nestle is on that child slave labor water regulation. Nestle loves child labor. Look up the chocolate uh, industry. <laughs> I love falling into rabbit holes and wormholes with Corey. Yeah, that's right. All holes, baby. All of the holes. Why isn't it just t- called hole talk? <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't, I don't hate that as much as you think I might. Hi guys, welcome to hole talk. The whole story. Whole story is good, actually. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, we're getting big. Got some big holes. Oompa Loompa, life's matter. I don't get that. Some people just have to make it political. We're, we're in a hole, baby. We're not in po- politics. This is a hole. Holy shit, you're still on? Or am I just seeing an old part of the show? Props if you're still on. Uh, yeah, it's 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Monday through Friday, Lane. 008, who had a high school reunion while we were on earlier. Did you leave and come back, you fucking shitheel? How dare you? No, I'm mad. Butthole talk. Uh, a daytime high school reunion? That is weird. Yeah. Worst reunion ever. Get your shit together, Lane. Fine. Yeah, damn right, fine. Pole shot? Reunions. Pole shot's all right. 
reunions in a pandemic where you just get around and cough on What about whole post? We're going to move the whole post on this one. Nobody? All right. Crickets. I'll be A. Hey, I'm getting to the crickets, okay? Shut up. No, it's like when you used to yell like. I'm just going to do it with crickets. No, I'm using the soundboard. I make actual crickets. I also have a tumbleweed sound. And I'm going to get that fucking hydrate sound. I'm going to do that today, too. I'm putting that on the list. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. That's a good cut. Get a particle accelerator. Get you all the hydrate you need. If I do if I do a new opening to this show, which I might, like I might change the theme music. And if You're going to have the FBI come to your door and they'll be like, you can't use that clip in your show. Yeah. Uh, that clip has actual hydrate in it. You're going to jail. Wait, what? We don't need everyone learning how to make particle accelerators. <laughs> Well, that's no fun. But guys, all you need to do to make a water-powered car is make yourself your own backyard power generator. Get yourself a solar-powered uh, hydrogen thing for water. And uh, bingo, bango, zango. You got yourself uh, anything you want, water-powered. Is that how that works? Yeah, apparently. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm not mad. Just doesn't seem like I mean, it I'm, should work that way, I guess. But, you know, what the fuck get, do I do? Getting me a particle accelerator, it turns out. Yeah. Get you a so particle accelerator. That's what I'm doing with my Trump tech. I don't Just know make sure think. to put all the warning signs on that free thing. No way, man. I want the kids to get zapped. Yeah. I did leave and come back. But I'm glad to be back. Well, good. I'm glad you're back, you prick. Uh, people are calling people old. That's kind of funny. My 20 year sh was canceled Saturday. Poor guy. Good. Yeah, good. Glad that happened to you. You don't need to go to your 20 year reunion. That's what you get Just for graduating on the millennia, you fuck. I hated all you 20 or your 2000. Lane kids. said, I ordered a thin crust pepperoni from Little Squeezers. And the only reason I didn't eat the entire thing. It's because I gave half of it to the neighbor lady. Cool, I guess. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's all reunions are. They're just fucking dick measuring contests. Hey, remember when I hated you back in the day? Still do. Get fucked. I just want to check out some old MILFs. Okay. It's pretty gross, but all right. So, Tovar, did we learn anything today other than don't fuck with money? Yeah, uh, don't grab the third rail. Always sell out. Uh, and Yeah, I feel uh, like that's the lesson. The lesson is always yeah. sell out. Yeah, and uh, start building your part particle accelerators today. But more importantly, always sell out. Yeah, definitely always sell out. Like, if you have the option to sell out, do that. Always do that. It's the safe bet 100% of the time. Right. It's, yeah, no, always sell out. All right. Well, uh, thanks for, uh, tell people where to, yeah, you don't do that anymore. Who cares? Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm on Instagram if you want to come find me. Uh, I'm yeah. taking a break from Facebook stuff. Yeah, tell, and, them, uh, hey, tell them when you'll be on Facebook. And I'll work on your cars for like right around 100 bucks an hour. Uh, when will I be on Facebook? I don't know. Probably never. I think I'm the Irish goodbye Facebook. That kind of seems like the way to go. I might, uh, right. I might recommend Parlor to you. It's kind of funny. Okay. But it's like, it's like Republican Twitter. Oh, God, but it's I don't like, think I'd be able to take it. It's kind of hilarious <laughs> though, because it's like stupid Republican Twitter. Oh, yeah. It's, and it like, what's a... awesome is it's like, it's like Twitter, but like nobody, like nobody acknowledges anybody without followers. So you just oh. show up on their page, grief them, and then go back to just doing whatever you want. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I bet. Diggity said, Tovar, come over. I need to finish the brake line on my old car. Oh, great. You can do that in an hour, right? <laughs> yeah, all right. 
After hour, after hour. <laughs> Ellie Mae says $100 an hour sounds reasonable, especially for rusted parts. Yeah, I know. I got to go fix uh, I got to go fix something for them today, matter of fact. When I get off the show, that's where I'm going. To go work on Ellie Mae shit. Lane goes, I can get down with that. Like selling out. Who are you trying to press? Yeah, sell out, baby. Everybody should sell out. Always sell out. Is it the way to go to leave Facebook? I don't know. I think Facebook is done. I think that this election cycle is going to be real painful if you keep on Facebook. It's just like, I don't know if it's the way to go. Like I wouldn't have a Facebook um, if I didn't do comedy for all those yeah, years. And I, I agree. Like, it's great. Around, yeah, I'm just I'm trying to like rationalize why I have it, and like with everything going on today, it's just an <laughs> irrational. JJ's blood alcohol content said uh, my storage tanks are leaking in my vet. Can you fix them? Yeah, man, uh, with a match. But it's hydrogen. Yeah, it's going to fix the problem. Doogie says, I'm actually cutting all the old lines out, all brand new. Okay, if you get prefab lines, it's really not that hard. Um, if you have to run them all yourself and do all the fittings. It... Is there any tips you can tell them? Uh, patience. And uh, what I use for uh, interning things is actually like a, a can of WD-40. Or, uh, like any like aerosol can it's like the perfect hardness all right well hey buddy thanks for coming uh wait yeah. you just said my vet has a vacuum leak and idles high can you fix it <laughs> yeah with the new uh with the new crate in is that why it does that no i mean it's probably just an old tired vet engine would be my guess it's probably gone through but if it's got a vacuum leak it should be easily to track down i got a vacuum yeah, I could probably do that. Yeah. I like how you're like, no, I can't do that. You're like, well, actually, it's probably this, and I have that. Yeah, I probably do that. <laughs> it's like you talk yourself like to, into doing it. Like, I just like to talk shit about it because it's a Corvette, and Mikey loves it. It's a pretty nice Corvette, though. It is a nice Corvette. I like those old ones, man. It's got, like, Honestly, shitty carpet like, on the inside. It just feels like a vet. I like it. Yeah. Well, and if I was going to own one, it would be one of those, but with, like, a more modern drive. And it has like, flip-up has- lights, baby. He has the one that I want to carve up. And also, another pro tip, I would never own a Corvette that didn't have flip-up lights. That's the dumbest thing yeah. I ever did when I got rid of them. I've, I've, owned, I've owned a Nissan 240SX. I'm never owning a vet without flip-up lights. Dude, we, that's, uh, we're that's 240 brothers. That's right. That Mikey says, I'm serious. I need it fixed. It idles at 45 miles per hour and have to ride the brakes to stay under 30. Well, one day it'll crash, and then all the other Corvettes from that year will be more valuable. ha, <laughs> ha. Uh, no diggity says my government surveillance device isn't beeping on my car. Can you fix? What's not beeping on his car? He said my government surveillance device isn't beeping on my car. Can you fix it? Um, yeah, turn your cell phone louder. <laughs> this question and answer portion is kind of fun. Yeah, JJ's blood alcohol content <laughs> said, "Am I the only one in the world that doesn't hate the mid '80s vet?" No. No, I like the mid '80s vet. I just don't like its guts. It looks so good, though. It does. It it looks really good. It just needs a motor. You put a Nissan motor in that, probably. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I'd put a Skyline motor in that. A GTR Dude, a Silva motor? or whatever? Silvia? No, GTR. What called? Twin, yeah. <laughs> Cheeseburger Pie says, idle it into a tree and get something that's not an 80s vet. <laughs> <laughs> and we fixed it. <laughs> 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 Wednesday, Thursday, I can hook you up. ZR dash one is the only good thing of that era. The oh, the ZR one, yeah. ZR one is like the the best Corvette of any. Era. <laughs> Mikey it's, goes, it's not an '80s vet. Where did you get your info? It's a '90s vet. It's just that it's that it's from that same stuff. Everything is fine on my 300. Can you fix it? Yeah, <laughs> joy. Uh, Rusty, Gra- Rusty Grammer says my, my 1994 time machine only plays Joe Diffie from the radio. Any advice? Yeah, man. Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> JJ's Blood Alcohol Content writes Vets don't go into trees. They wrap themselves around them. No, they don't wrap. They're fiberglass. They break. They shatter around them. Oh, yeah. Those things are fiberglass, aren't they? Yeah. yeah there's a, One of the, my favorite police chase videos is that one dumbass that runs back of a semi at like 120 and it's just like him sliding down the seat because there's a vaporator 
Mikey, two milk says, I want to put a pro charger on the BMW. Can you do it? Ooh, yes. I've actually installed charger stuff. BMW would be a new one for me. But yeah, I've actually worked on charger. So that's definitely in my wheel. No diggity says, my Corvette T-tops are causing my toupee to fly off above 40 miles per hour. Can you fix it? Yeah. Super glue. <laughs> Everybody's now just saying, hell yeah, Mikey, boost it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a fun little Beamer. Fucking Mikey. He's got a Beamer. He's got a bike. He's got a fucking Corvette. You name it, he's got it. Fucking Toy Boy. Do. Toy yeah, Boy over you, there. That's what you do when you, you know, you get bored. You night like toy. Lane 008 says, any Challenger fans in here? Like the spacecraft that blew up? I'm not a fan of that. Oof. My uncle worked on that. I'm a challenger boy myself. Challenger boy. The new challengers? So are we talking like Dodge? Like the new Dodge challenger? Like anything crazy. Mr. Approachable right. says, if you get really bored, you can come work on my V10. Ooh. Was a Ford? Got a big truck? Mikey Tubuck says, since I bought my vet, I had a fancy for New Balance shoes. Can you fix that? <laughs> Does he, does he drive it five miles under the speed limit and fucking smoke cigars too? Probably. Sinister Mind says, I would love a Hellcat or a Demon and die in that. Uh, Yeah, you know, I, if I'm going to give Chrysler any respect. It's going to be for what they've done with the Demon. Um, I actually, uh, I'm not a big, big fan of gas. Dodge, Adam, garage. Dodge. Uh, yeah. Not a big, big fan of uh, Gas Monkey Garage, but they did something called the Shark Cat, uh, where they took an old Dodge Dart and they put a Demon uh, drivetrain in it, or a Hellcat drivetrain in it, excuse me. And I thought that was really Since I bought my boat, I've had a fancy for Doc Sider shoes and Ed Hardy t-shirts. Can you fix it? Uh, yeah, buy a better boat? I don't know. All right. Lane says, I traded my Challenger for a Jeep. Yeah, Lane, do you still live in that Jeep? For a while, Lane had a whole setup where he was living out of his Jeep. It was pretty rad. Oh, okay. Like, he had, like, a TV and everything installed in there and the whole back. I mean, like, he lived for, for months, I think, in that Jeep. Wow. See? T. Thompson actually knows him. Living the dream. No diggity says, I have an old dart. Can you put a Hellcat motor in it? Um, I mean, with enough money, yeah. A new charger, I guess they're talking about. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those new. No, they don't do nothing uh, for me. Let's see here. Mikey Two Milks writes, since I became a mod, I haven't got to time out anybody. Can you fix it? Uh, cheeseburger pie <laughs> says F you, Mikey. Uh, Mikey, go ahead and time cheeseburger pie out just for a little bit. He's getting insolent with you, and you're right. You need to use this power, or it will atrophy. I need to make sure that you're up. Give him, give him just a little good old time out. Cheeseburger, you earn this. Don't say fuck you to Mikey. <laughs> oh, nine messages were deleted by a moderator. There he goes, and he's gone. There you go. Mikey two mods doing the Lord's work over there. Uh, blood alcohol content road took a three fours cheap. tank of gas to drive 90 miles an hour or yesterday. Is the line on the road a hint that something's wrong? <laughs> no, I think it's fine. You know what you should do is take up smoking. Round of thoughts. Look up general mayhem that roadkill built Tovar. Oh, General May happens a roadkill. Roadkill's another car show. I'll look it up. Lane 008 says, not for a while. I'm still in the Jeep, bro. You'd have to pay me some there. money to move into a fixed location. Yeah, because you're getting used to it. Yeah, I guess paying rent is a scam. It sort of is, right? Yeah. Uh, Sister Mind says, my dad is trying to drop a 70s V10 from an old form ambulance into his mid seventy Plymouth Duster. That sounds neat.
Thompson goes, yeah, it didn't look that bad. I watched his rants. Yeah, Lane used to drink and rant on there in his Jeep. It's pretty great. Oh, shit. We have a mod battle right here. Mikey Two Milks modded out Cheeseburger Pie, but then No Diggity unmoderated it. Ooh. We got a war, mod boys. War. We're going to war. Mod war. Wish I had some sweet war sound effects. Mod war. Where's my stimulus check and free rent? The system is slated against me. All right. Well, what do we learn? What do we learn today, Tovar? Always sell out. Always sell out. Free energy is not a myth, and we're out of here. All right, Tovar. Thanks for uh, st- thanks for stopping by, and thanks ruining my me. enjoyment of stuff that I didn't know about. Thank you for ruining my fucking life. I guess you're welcome. I guess you're welcome. We move into the end phase. Uh, Remember, we do this Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thank you guys for coming out. We will see you tomorrow. Uh, Remember, Tovar, what are we going to do? What are we always going to do? Eat take? No. The other one. Uh, Smoke? Sell out. Oh, yeah, I'm going to sell out. Yeah, fuck yeah. We're going to sell out. Always sell out. Always. 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 Uh, If you want to join in on the show, don't forget to pop over to the Discord. Uh, Don't forget to go over to Venmo. Anything you donate will go directly to helping the show, getting equipment, and doing stuff like that. Uh, You can also go and donate over in the tip section if you prefer uh, PayPal. Also, uh, don't forget to follow me across all mediums at Corey Adam Comedy. Uh, You guys have been awesome. We're going to fucking get some updates going on. Uh, Also, we have the Twitch Talk cast station, which is where all of the uh, games will be played. So if you want to watch games, and we'll be hosting them here, but make sure you go over and subscribe, or not subscribe, but uh, uh, follow Twitch Talk cast, uh, as we will be doing a bunch of video games. We got our chat link cable, so we might even start uh, Last of Us. We'll see what happens. But yeah, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. Always sell out. You guys rule. We out. To our town, the microphone, the bombs hit. Suffer fools, and he never took no lift.